Bum, 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 bum. I have too many windows open. Cool. Uh, we're doing bottom achievey. Yeah, that sounds like a very elegant solution that doesn't require me to uh, actually do the file hosting myself either. Is pdx.tools a just a fan-made site or is it a Paradox website? Like, I've never heard of it before. We're going for triple the roam. Oop. We're zero out of three of the way there. Wow. Update stream title and stuff. Do, 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 How's music volume, by the way? I've noticed that I hum a lot, and I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear the music. I remember a while back we had tried to bump the volume up, and then I may have lowered the volume again. Not sure. Triple the roam as Novgorod. Do, 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 do. You probably don't need the music because you can just listen to me, right? You vote slightly louder, 2%. How about 69% divided by 100? I'll give you 0.69. I'll give you one click. I don't know how much it actually is. One click is actually a lot. We'll go like one pixel. Perfect. Done. Okay, uh, we are Pazadnik Ev Femini the Second, 342. We're cruel and secretive. Age 71, old man. Nice. Nice. Too. We are a Vechi Republic. Fancy Republic. Vechi. Vechi. Here, where's the description of it? This state is governed by a Vechi, a council with the highest legislative and judicial authority consisting of boyars, merchants, and even commoners. Fixed to Dushi rank government enables aristocrats, traders, and guilds. Six-year term election. Blah. Gross. Enables the Merchant Republic mechanics. Vassals transfer trade power to you automatically at 50%. You can still divert more than that if you use the divert trade interaction with subjects, but they will always give you at least 50. And this is a interesting mechanic because it also transfers trade from, like, people that you shouldn't be able to transfer trade from. Off the top of my head, if you somehow manage to become a Vetri Republic while having a personal union, it even transfers trade from personal unions and from tributaries, and from all of the things, because that's just what this type of plutocracy-type merchant republic thing does. Allows for plutocratic, disall disallows aristocratic. Elections can change the influence of factions. We can place, place trade posts, form trade leagues, and create trading cities. We also have Russian government ability. Reduced efficiency for Russian abilities. We also get a merchant, 10 more max absolutism, 100 governing capacity. We can recruit Streltsy. And we have 10% Streltsy for Summit Fraction. Cool. So we should be allowed to have one. One whole Streltsy. We're going to name him Jimmy. That's for sure. We'll put all the Jimmies together. We have the Aristocrats, which give Morale of Armies plus 5, and Sailors. Ooh. The Traders, Global Trade Power plus 10, National Tax Power, power blah, blah, National Tax Modifier minus 5, Maintenance Modifier minus 10, and Construction Cost minus 10, and Goods Produced minus uh, plus 10. But a cost of national manpower minus 10. So those are the things. Right now we have the that one in charge. They do trend based on some of your country's numbers, but in general you control it with monarch points. Um I can never remember. This is one of those things that like I should know. There used to be a gotcha mechanic if you ever allowed any of these factions to go above 80% influence. And I think that I checked it the last time we had the faction system, and it is still a gotcha. But I could be wrong. It could be one of those ones that did exist, and then they got rid of. I don't remember. Basically, you don't want any of these to go above 80. Um, that's just something that's always been in my head, and is probably still true. All right, um, we're going to run trade power. We have Metropolitans, because we are Orthodox, which is not the best religion in the game, no matter what anyone says. Um, it's an okay, it's an okay religion, but it's, it's not the best. It's not. Also, shit, all of my map, ma map modes got fucked because I reloaded a older version of the game. So, we're gonna go ahead and save and reload after I update my, have a backup of my settings because this happens. I don't like having my keyboard shortcuts not be correct. 
Settings, backup. Settings can die. Settings dot back can get duplicated. And now we have settings dot dot back. Okay. Ba -bum, ba -bum. One of my top religions. The best religion in the game, uh, according to me, is Sunni. I would say that Ibadi is stronger than Sunni, but because there's fewer overall provinces that start the game as Ibadi versus the amount of provinces that start as Sunni, the opportunity cost for like trying to convert the whole world to Ibadi is not worth the benefit. Therefore, Sunni is better, but technically, Ibadi is stronger. Honestly, I would say Catholic is probably better than Orthodox. Based on that same rationale, there's more overall Catholic provinces at the start of the game. Protestant's very strong. I would possibly even rank Protestant ahead of Orthodox. Because the, the principal thing that Orthodox does that most people seem to like get hung up on is the manpower from having high patriarch authority. And we talked about this yesterday, like at every in every campaign you reach a point where manpower is not a problem anymore in single player. So in single player E4, I, I just don't value the manpower component of orthodoxy. So if you take that away, then the things that orthodox does are decent, but like not good enough. Reformed is actually quite good now too. In fact, I haven't played with Reformed since they added the fourth click. There's four different things you can turn on now, and the fourth one is nuts. Like, really strong. I don't remember what it is, but it's really good. That's, that's all I know. What if you're playing taller rather than wider with a body? Well, there are only three countries in the game that start as a body, so your options are very limited. Um, a body's fine. If you're taking a body, if you're, if you're thinking a body's good just because of the extra 10% goods produced, just keep in mind that goods produced is nice, but it's just money, right? Like, it's better money than having, like, national tax modifier plus 20 or something, but eventually it's just money. And again, like with manpower, you'll reach a point where you have enough money. It happened in our Frankfurt campaign and it took less than 100 years. We had 9,000 ducats or whatever sitting in the bank because there were literally no buildings to build, no, no monuments worth upgrading, no centers of trade to upgrade. We had a super luxury army with lots of artillery and cavalry and we were at our force limit and there was just no reason to spend the money on anything. So. Eventually, you know, you don't really need more money. So that's where you want to convert money into power. And that's why, generally speaking, when I'm looking at like a country's ideas, why does the music seem so quiet now? Oh, it is quiet. That's why. Because of my settings being updated, right. Um, generally, like the things that I usually look for are how many military modifiers are in the national ideas. And that's like the most important factor because, you know, like yearly prestige, useful, but kind of useless eventually. Missionary strength, useful, but generally like you can get enough missionary strength. Yearly Republican tradition, that's just monarch points. Eventually you don't have problems with monarch points. So like, how does this ID group actually affect us when we're fighting other countries? Only in the military stuff matters. And generally then it's like guaranteed pips on leaders or morale of armies or discipline or movement speed or marginally like fort defense but generally you shouldn't be having people siege you so etc but let's not try to get too derailed by religious stuff we have to be orthodox for a while so let's just do it how quickly could we become catholic if we wanted to we have to conquer Livonian order and do some shenanigans bum 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 Am I mistaken in remembering that the Vecchi Republics didn't used to have estates? When they gave estates to all types of government, that was such a huge buff to these obscure government types like Vecchi Republic. I think that they did just used to have factions and that's it. Can we form Russia as a Catholic? That's a good question. Russia can't exist. Need to be Advent Tech 10. Looks like there's no religious requirement in here. So, yes. Yep, looks like you're allowed to. Alright, so how do we get started? Stolen Recluse, thank you for your sub. 
sorry for being so mean to you yesterday, buddy. It's it's not your fault. You were just trying to explore, but you were really annoying. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. We got a trade guy. We got a level two inflation guy. Sad. You the prestige guy, pretty good. Stab Gus. We probably buy a Stab Gus guy if we want to bump Stab. We do because we're probably gonna want to get prosperity. However, let's be let's be honest. We're not gonna have prosperity. Our game plan to win against Russia is to let them occupy most of our country, so let's not even bump stab because it's just pointless. We've got three heavies for some reason. We're gonna protect trade here and go home during war. We do need to worry about people raiding our coasts because this pirate republic is here. Is this a type of pirate republic that can raid coasts on including coasts of countries of the same religion. So they can raid everyone. Yeah, so they will raid us. We should probably put a couple ships on not letting them do that. Let's do half of the lights on hunt pirates here, go home during war. And the other half can be on protect trade, on go home during war. And this fleet get mothballed. Bum, 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 bum. Aristocrats, traders. Bum, bum. Our merchants are in Kiev, Kazan, White Sea. White Sea collecting is giving us, like, no money. We're going to move the merchant from the White Sea to here instead. And that will give us more overall money, most likely. Okay, um, let me think. We start off with a truce. We do not. They can attack us right away. We are rivaled by Denmark, Lithuania, and Tver. Awesome. We get show strength on Tver quickly. That'd be wonderful. Let's get our army in position. Uh, we can make our old man into a dude. Let's do that. Hopefully he's good. Nice. 132 is actually decent. We are not at our force limit. We will need to be at our force limit if we're going to win against Russia, Muscovy. So let's go ahead and get a Streltsy started. They, uh... What's the deal with Streltsy again? Land fire damage plus 10. Land fire damage received minus 10. There's also other modifiers that they can get from privileges, I believe. We'll get one of those started. Let's get, uh... We want as much power as we can, but we don't have a strong economy, so we're not going to run four cav. We're just going to train up before some infantry. We've got two forts, and we need three for army tradition from forts. Um, um, takes 30 months to build a fort, though, and we're definitely going to fight Russia before that. Most likely, we're going to chill over here, but I want to try to get this Tavera thing done. Why is there a traitor's faction? Traitors? Traitors. Oh, the traitors. Ha. Hmm. I get it. Funny. Alright, let's do all of our clicks. We, um... We're in an isolated part of the world, which means that we're going to have very poor institution spread, which means that we're going to have to develop the institutions or be willing to fall behind on institutions. So... That means we need a lot of monarch points. That means... Innovative ideas might be a good opportunity, uh, you know, good option in this in this position. Just, just saying, just, just saying. Um, <laughs> we might also want to consider doing estate and statutory rights, even though we have more than one province, and it will affect our autonomy, which will affect government reform progress by a fair bit. Hmm. The decision to do estate and statutory rights is kind of a big one. We're a republic, so if we go espionage ideas, we can't get free revoked government reform, making it harder to get rid of. We are a republic, so the estate statutory rights would be in this category, which is going to be the category where we have a lot of influence from the burgers. Generally, it's hard to get all the way to 100 influence, sorry, 100 loyalty. I think we don't do estate statutory rights in this circumstance. It's just going to be too much work to get rid of. And I know we're going to have economic problems for a while. So, that being said, we can still do some of the uh, monarch point generation. In particular, military, so we can get to tech 6 faster. Sorry, tech 4. Why can't I say the right words? Why are words so hard, man? We have 6 prestige. Bum, 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 bum. We do have a coastline so we can get national taxes plus 10 and other stuff here all right if we're not bumping stab let's just immediately turn on our advisor cost discounts start with that 
if we are going to only spend some crown land on stuff, the two that are the most important to me, military point gen and admin point gen, at this stage of the game. Eventually, I feel all monarch points are equal, but at the start of the game, admin points for the first idea group, military points for Miltech 4. Um, so, I think we will be turning on military point gen now. We can do one seize land, and we can either get money, go down to low crown land. I want to try to stay above 20%, so we don't have autonomy creeping up. But... We will not be able to get to 20 quickly. We could go to like 15 and then in 5 years seize again without the sale. I guess the question is, do we need sale of titles to win our war with Muscovy? Maybe not. Maybe not. What is this? Oh right, this is a special Russia thing we have to decide. Early serfdom versus increased peasant freedom. So... This is uh, related to Russia. We can either do early serfdom, which says the peasants have been ensurfed by the boyars though the system has been not been institutionalized yet it is the first step to the complete eradication of the peasantry's freedom or increased peasant freedom against the will of the boyars the peasants have received additional freedom in their mobility they are now allowed to change their landowner whenever they want forcing the boyars to show mercy on the peasants these are mutually exclusive National Nurse minus 1, National Manpower plus 10, War Taxes minus 50, Boyar Privilege Slots plus 1, so it just pays for itself, essentially. Institution Spread minus 20, versus Institution Spread plus 10, so 30% swing, and a Manpower modifier. We're already not making much Manpower, not a big deal to lose. Hmm, well it's a 30% swing on Max Manpower too. The early Serfdom gives early power, Increased Peasant Freedom gives middle and late game power. What would you guys prefer to do? We can make a monument. Would we want to be using Mercs as an upgrade anyway? Depends on how our economy shakes out. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna win our first war. I already have a plan for that. Early power is definitely better than late game power. However, this is a a. a as far as I know, I was when I when I played as Muscovy per Avers' recommendation, I don't think you can actually ever switch these. If this is like a permanent choice. Most of the time when you make a binary choice, like you can do a, a difficult interaction to flip it later on, but I don't think you can undo it. I think we probably try out increased peasant freedom this time. Losing loyalty with the bur the uh, boyars is a little bit annoying, but uh, it's fine, right? You would wait and do freedom later, later. Just late, just don't turn it on. Interesting. True, you could just not do it. You don't have to do it as long as you leave a privilege slot open. Eventually, you could turn it in, right? That way, we don't lose the twenty percent manpower. We don't get the free privilege slot to cover the cost, but for now we're not benefiting from institution spread, so yeah, technically turning this on is just bad, isn't it? You just lose manpower and lose loyalty equilibrium. Huh. Smart. Yeah, okay, but we can't forget, Jimmy. Does it force you to pick? It might. Yeah, I don't know. There might be a mission that requires you to have decided, you know, to decide one of them. I don't know. Nice. Yeah, let's just not choose for now. Okay, we'll turn on Supremacy over the Council. We will turn on the ability to get a free General. We will probably want to get... We don't want a new guy. Does not lose Crown Land share from developing provinces is okay. This one's useful just for um, helping to get the Burger... Sorry, the, the Boyar loyalty equilibrium above 60. Turn that one on for now. Man, that's already at five. We're already at five out of six, damn. Fills up quick. Should we always leave one open so that we can turn that on whenever we want? We are, we're very likely to want to do a vassal swarm at some point, so... Hmm. It might be just leave this slot open, and then when we're ready to make vassals, turn this one in, and then turn in with the seventh slot. Wrong duchies. 
You don't have to have strong duchies, but it is very nice. Okay, patriarchs. We have right of donations. We can get some patriarch authority. I do like this. Let's do that. And we're going to immediately get the patriarch authority from them. We do lose some Republican tradition. That's okay. I'm going to get a general from the dude. We can... We do want clerical education. We do want religious diplomats for diplomat plus one. Um... Um, 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 keeping two slots open for right now is okay. Religious culture is one of the 5% crown land things. So one option is to seize land and spend five crown land to turn that in and get like an extra 10% tax production and manpower modifier. Or we could go with the trade one, which makes way more sense since we are a plutocracy. Uh, just a quick refresh. Uh, I can't say words. Quick refresher on plutocracies if you're not familiar with them. Um... A plutocratic government type, type of a type of republic. If it ever says in there, enables merchant republic mechanics. Uh, it doesn't actually say in the in the description here. Vassals transfer trade power to you. Higher state governing costs. Cheaper trade companies. Okay, yeah, that's all fine and good. But a very, 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 very important part of plutocratic government types is that whatever your percent control is in a trade node, every country that's not you gets an increase in their local goods produced equal to your total trade power in the node divided by two. So we have 9% trade power here. If we go hover over, say, the Bashkir gold mine, which is not affected by goods produced, in this case, never mind. Um, goods produced efficiency plus 5.8% due to nearby merchant republics, trading cities, and trading companies. 5.8% is more than nine divided by two, but that's because there's also, the Skov is a plutocrat, they're also a Vecchi Republic. So the sum of all plutocracies, percent control of the node, divided by two, equals goods produced for everyone else. Not for you, though, because, yeah, we're only getting the benefit from Vaskov, not from us. Yeah, plut plutocracies, they, they force more goods produced because they, they want to focus on trade income. So the reason I talked about all that is because if you had to choose between the clergy click that gives you... 10% tax bonifier, 10% production efficiency, and 10% manpower. Yeah, that one's good and all, but this one plays into the plutocracy's playstyle. The increased global trade power plus 11.5% means we're going to have more trade power in nodes, which means more goods produced, which means more trade income, etc., etc., right? So I do lean pretty heavily toward this. I'm just trying to decide if we need the temporary money here to win a war. We are making money. I think maybe we could try to get away without it. Um, let's borrow some money from the burgers. Let's hide our manpower fully. Let's do a diet. These guys want us to convert. No, they want us to conquer land from Lithuania. Sure, just attack the guy with 28k troops. No problem. Get manpower back. Sounds good. Or do Diplodev and get some cash. Diplodev and get some cash is okay, but it's in a bad location. We'll do the stop hiding... Yeah, put our manpower pull back. We need to be at like eight and a half. Call it nine thousand. Let me just cancel all these troops. Let a day go by. Get our guy. We're gonna go with him for now. For this, we definitely want trade efficiency guy if possible. I think yes. And we don't actually want stab cost guy because, like I said, our our, our country is gonna get occupied. Let's just go with the early prestige guy for morale of armies. I think we do seize land. And I think I'm going to go with the this one. Exempt from seize land for future exempt uh, future clicks. Let's do that. Burgers trend to 75. Boyars trend to 56. HRX trend to 52. Get one more thing in here. We can do just oversight. That should get them trending to 60. Boyars are still not quite there. And we have no slots open. It's okay. We don't need all of them to trend to 60. We'll eventually make them happy just with events and stuff, I guess. Other clicks for the burgers. Ooh, private trade fleets is a pretty strong one. Just to make ships cheaper to build. Ooh, ooh. Very motivated for certain, like, gimmicky mechanics, like... I think we might try, if I can remember to do it. 
to create a subject, get control of three of the centers of trade in this node, and then do the exploit so that we can get to 100% mercantilism. It's extremely good with plutocracies to suddenly have 100% mercantilism, you know, for obvious reasons. So right now we have two centers of trade in this node. If we get a third, then we'll be allowed to do the privilege, uh, what's it called? You know, the one. Where would be the easiest one to get? Probably Peskov. So steal Peskov from Muscovy, potentially, and then we can get to 100% ridiculism. Other really good ones for us are going to be this one. Provincial trade power plus 24.7% and merchant trade power plus 5. We definitely want that on. We do have loans out, so I can easily get a privilege slot back if I need to. We can go to 6 out of 6 without concern. National tax plus 10, construction cost minus 10 is good. Um, this might be good enough. It's also pretty nice to get 250 gold worth of heavies. And then just sell them to people, but it's really hard for us to revoke privileges based on the high, high influence already. So I don't think we can afford to do that. Um, hmm. Private trade ships or... Construction cost minus 10, national tax plus 10. Naval maintenance minus 10. Ship trade power plus 10 is not that much. Ship, light ship costs. Each ship costs 20 gold. It saves you 4 gold per ship. Let's say we build 100 ships. That's 4 times 100. That's 400 gold. We will build 100 light ships eventually. It also affects maintenance. Probably affects maintenance more than, like, this one would. Yeah, if you go espionage, you can vote for free. Yes, but you have to be a monarchy. Republics do not get access to puppet the nobility on tier 2. That's a monarchy-specific government reform. Which we will become a monarchy eventually, so... You think they fixed the ad exploit? Last time someone said that, we immediately did it again. So, I don't think that they fixed it. You think we spend more money overall on boats or on buildings? Each building would save generally, like, 10 gold. Hmm. Why not both? Eventually we'll pay off our loans, we can just turn both on. I think we'll do this one for now. Cool. Alright, we've done most of the setup. Let me just make a backup save just in case, I don't know, something goes wrong. And we've, Doing all the setup with the states takes a while. Delete all the old saves. There's only one save in here. Old bottom of Chibi. Bum 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 Okay, Conscious Crate Metropolitan. Did they ever fix the broken Metropolitan button? I remember it was broken the last time I played this religion. Religious Leagues. There's a Religious Leagues map? Wow. Metropolitan. Nope, they did not fix it. It's supposed to show two colors. It's supposed to show... I mean, it even says in the thing, right? Yellow states have metropolitan, green states can be assigned one. It doesn't. There are no green ones. It lies. Okay, this one requires 30 dev, and we only have 24. Probably the only other state that's close. States and territories, total development. Yeah, it's 24, 17. However, we got five patriarch authority from the other thing, so we do have 10, which means we can turn on an icon. Icon of Christ is probably the best option, since we're going to want a dev push institution. 5% um, discipline is not going to be what allows us to win our war against Muscovy, so I don't think we turn that on. We don't have to turn this on now, because it does last for 20 years, but before we do any buildings or any dev clicks, we're going to want to remember to eventually do it. And in the meantime, we do benefit slightly from this 3.3% local manpower. Wow. Wow. So much. Cool. We could ask for contribution, it will make the burgers mad. Let's wait till they're not mad. Also, for some reason, the alert is undisabled. This needs to get disabled permanently. Thank you. Bum, bum, bum. This one too. All my permanently disabled alerts got reset, apparently. Alright, we have no friends. We can ally one country. It is... Scotland. Well, until Scotland's guarantee from France is gone, Scotland's a fairly safe pick. Um...
Scotland does have transports, so they could theoretically land troops, but I think that would actually hurt us in the first war with Muscovy. First thing we're going to do is embargo Muscovy, by the way. And we are going to rival him, yes. I think yes. I think we just got to go after him right away. We're going to rival him. Hopefully he'll rival us quickly. We're going to try to set up our our start with, um, what is it called? The thing. We do spend some Diplo points right away to get Global Trade Power plus 10 active instead of this. Trade Power Broad minus 10 instead of Global Trade plus 10 is effectively reducing our Trade Power modifier here by 20%, not just 10. And we want Trade Power in nodes to increase overall goods produced and stuff and things. So yeah, I think we will put these guys in charge for 10 points. Traders are now in charge. We want to start doing stuff and things to people. Anyone else want to ally us? That's close. Rise in three reasons away. I actually don't want to get allies before our war with Muscovy, because our intent is to make him attack us, or we want to attack him. And if he attacks us, and then it's just not going to be great for us. Yeah, we're going to go for the show strength on Tavera if we can, but we... Um, holy shit. That is the general that we got from the nobles. Wow. Uh, wow. 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 Very impressive. Voting Order has a friend in Riga. Looks like Tver did ally Ryzan. Can't do anything with Ryzan. We just want to get our show strength for early Monarch Point Gen. We're going to keep our diplomats free. Um, I would like to attack Muscovy as quickly as possible. We're making five gold a month. How the fuck are we already making five gold a month? Wow. Who said that Musk or that Novgorod has uh, economic problems? Like this is um, that's a lot of income already. Like we already have advisors and stuff too. Like damn, dude. There's a disaster building up, but not really. That's why we're not pissing off the burgers just yet. All right, let's go to the eleventh. See if he allies anyone else. He didn't. And we beat these two. Eleven. K and 3k and how much of that is owned by Ryzen? 5 and 1. Bear only has 6. He's got those 8k troops. He has a level 1 fort. Very likely that Muscovy either goes after us or goes after Ryzen. So perhaps we do want to ally Scotland so that we don't get attacked until I can get the show strength done. Let's do that real quick. I think we go for Tver. We're going to rival Tver. We're going to embargo a subject of Muscovy to update our CBs. So we can declare war before anything else changes. Um, getting early clay would be nice, but the show strength for Humiliate, you know, three Monarch points a month plus 300 Monarch points up front plus three Splendor per month instead of one, like, it's just so, so good. And with a six Shock General, we should be able to do this easily. We we'll stack wipe him first. We have one ally. Your country's at war. I hate that all my alerts got re-turned on. It's annoying. We're making so much money because we recognize innovative is good. True, yes. Um, we're not going to focus on anything until after we get to Miltech 4, then we probably focus admin. Um, we Because we're making so much money, we have half-price land maintenance guy, I'm kind of tempted to bump him to level 2. We lose 1.3 gold a month for one Monarch point, getting us to tech 6. So, 6. Tech 4. Well, technically we get to tech 6 faster also, but... He's got 2 military skill, we have 2 military skill. Um, it's safe to assume he is running a military advisor, so yeah, if we run one more point per month, we could probably get ahead of him. I think we do. Infantry combat ability plus 10. Dude, this guy is a beast. Um, we're going to get started on our siege. Do we have siege pip? No siege pip. Um... Should we go run down to Ryzen? I'm expecting Ryzen to get occupied by Muscovy. What probably happens is because we're stack wiping Tver, um, Muscovy will just attack Ryzen, right? When when he realizes that uh, Tver won't defend, and then maybe he'll just take care of it for us. We'll go down to a barebone siege here. Have these guys go over to here. And uh, we do want to start spying on Muscovy. We do also want to embargo Tver, and we also want to 
Um, insult Muscovy, essentially. Here's our Streltsy. We do want to get... You know what? Honestly, I was saying we weren't going to have 4 Cav, but even with... Even with a level 2 half-price dude, and... Uh, how are we doing on reinforcement? Yeah, we're reinforcing slightly, so like the reinforcement costs are a big part of this. I think we can run 4 Cav. Let's run 4th Cav. Why not? Then we'll go pure infantry up to cap. Alright, um, did we embargo you? We did, we did here. Do an insult on Muscovy next month. Get our old army together so that it's safe. Keep our army all together so that it's safe. Through loot, we don't care about loot. Particularly. I mean, we do, but we don't. You know what I mean? We do want to build more Boats. Um, they're kind of lower, pro lower on the priority list. Perhaps we should even consider starting a third fort. We know we need a third fort, and it might make a difference in the war with Muscovy. 30 months is a long time, but... We built a fort to, like, protect. I just need a small area of land that's safe, so that, uh, you know, we let some of the land go, preferably the land that's in this node, because it's downstream from us. But we want to guarantee that our troops are safe here. So, like, a fort in Olenets, or Soraka. Probably in... Probably Olenets, just to extend, right? Novgorod projects to Tikvin, Olenets projects to here. That makes all of this over here safe. Doesn't fully protect the, uh... Like, it's not perfect zone of control, but it's about controlling this area, you know? Soraka won't get blockaded. Yeah, true. Um, the fact that it's coastal does give it a slight advantage. Generally, I usually do f prefer inland forts over coastal forts, even though coastal forts are technically safer, right? Because they have plus one advantage from not being blockaded. Actually, plus two. Um, but they also are a liability because, like, if you ever let them blockade you, um, it is worth a lot of war score compared to a inland fort. And that's pretty much the main reason. I just don't like coastal forts much, but... Soraka would be safer against Muscovy in particular. Not so much against Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, though, I imagine. What's winter look like? It's all bad? Good. Okay. We also considered putting it in White Corellia for actual zone of control projection, right? White Corellia would still project to Olenets. This projects to Tikvin. White Corellia would protect Corellia, Kexholm, and Ola. Also, we are able to release a subject already. If we wanted, we could release Satmi, which would give us more land force limit. Um, I'm going to consider. I think I will cancel some of these ships. Let's go light on ships for now. And I think we do want to start a fort right away. I would prefer to be able to do my burger click for the extra minus 10% construction cost. But we're already building up a disaster at 1.5% per month. Um, according to this. Except not really. Oh no, it is. Yeah, it's at 1.5. So we need them. I mean, they trend high enough. They just, I don't want to risk them, you know, trending super fast. Hmm. We'd also put these guys in charge for another 10% construction cost. And it's 20 gold on a fort. Save a total of 40. Yeah, also Christ, Panto Crater. Maybe we should just turn this on now, because I'm going to forget about it. 20 years is a very long time. Mm, yeah, I'm going to do it now. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, if I'm going to turn this on, I should turn it on now. The lower they are, the faster they recover. I think it'll be fine. Let's just go nuts. We're going to do this click also. I hate spending points to get the guilds in charge when I just paid points to get the traders in charge, but it's going to cost me essentially probably two admin clicks to get the guilds in charge and then another diplo click to get the traders back in charge. Would you spend 30 monarch points to save 20 gold is the question. I don't think so, actually. I think we don't do that one and we build a fort in White Corellia. 
Although, are we going to release this guy? Nah, let's not. Alright. Alright, I'm playing very slow. I'm trying to min-max my start. Uh, what? Poland did not take the Union over Lithuania? Interesting. That means that we are going to continue to be rivaled by Lithuania, so I guess we want to start spying on him and get a spy network or uh, situation built up. Do this as well. Okay. Weird. Lucky. Is it lucky? What are the odds again? 90% chance they take the uh, the Union, I think. Or do they reduce it? They might have reduced it. Boom, boom. Ryzen does still have 6k troops. We do not have military access to him. There's our fourth cav. Let's have this army split in half now since we have a large enough number of troops that we're probably safe wherever we are. We get loot spread out. Bum, bum, bum. It will be difficult to get the show strength active. There's an army over there. Looks like we do have access through Lithuania. Okay, these two guys can go to here. We want to pull the six shot guy off. I want to put the other guy in charge, see if he can get a trait. We don't lose stab on Monarch Death, but we do lose stab on Siege Lead, so maybe we don't actually put a general there. Um, what else was I thinking? Actually, I want the Cav. We want four Cav. Let's do this. I need to update my templates so that I can pull generals off easily. We're gonna pretend like we're going around so that he hopefully doesn't try to run. We also want to make sure we get an army in into Lithuania before he can cancel that military access request, because Lithuania will not give us access. This is our only opportunity really to get to him. Just need to get one troop in that land, and I should probably keep an army in his land no matter like for the whole war, just to ensure that it can't get broken. The uh, access request, you know, it was 90-10, now it's 75-25. Interesting. Okay, good to know. Bum, 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 bum. Without loot, we are losing money now, but that's all right. The fact that uh, we know where his army is and that uh, we can actually siege this down is great. Let's do this. We're going to put one infantry here. Actually, let's do three. These two are going to go there, and we'll leave one troop in Lithuania just to guarantee that he can't separate my armies. This is actually really important to do um, in... Situations like this, I think. Last thing we want to do is get stuck here and then have Muscovy attack us and now our army can't get home and we can't get black flagged. Although we could get black flagged in Odiev. In fact, let's get access through Odiev now and create a return province just in case. Because a black flag retreat would be quicker than uh, having to go through uh, Miss, uh, blah, Lithuania. I can say words. I can say them. I'm not good at saying them, but I can say them. Stack wipe? Should be. Yeah, easy stack wipe. Alright. Um, block him from training more troops, although training more troops is actually good for us. We just want this war to be done quick. Okay, Muscovy is able to attack these. When looking at who he could attack, I think he's going to attack Tver or Ryzan. I don't think he's going to attack us, um, based on just which one's easier. Could be wrong about that. Hopefully I'm not. If he attacks us right now, that would be annoying. Because then we're going to miss out on the opportunity for our show strength. We can just white piece rise in and be done with this. Um, let's see how that siege goes. It is a show strength, so before you get excited about like taking clay or forcing vassal, just be aware that um, it's not possible in this war. Have these guys go. Okay, we got to there. All right, we can peace out right now, get our show strength, and just get the hell out of this. And then have our army in a better position in case we have to fight Muscovy. In fact, keep in mind, the plan is to attack Muscovy. We're not going to let him... Like, ideally, we don't want him to attack us. We want to attack him. He hasn't rivaled us yet, though, which is sort of annoying. But he did embargo us, so we could attack him. Attacking him while he's dealing with these would be great. So yeah, I think we white piece against Ryzan. Let's get our army ready to get black flagged and come home. He did attack Tver, Conquest. 
Ryzan did not defend, I assume, which is not great. Would have been better for us if he did. I. This is why I should have pieced Ryzan out. Damn. Oh well. Now Ryzan's gonna be a isolated. Um. Would have been better, right? A level three fort to distract him, so that his army would like get stuck dealing with a secondary participant. But. Oh well. We don't have to play perfectly, right? We have a total of 18 troops. Supply limit's not great. Eight suffering attrition on my own land. Uh, you guys go to here. Well, we're actually, one thing to consider, we're actually safe right now. Muscovy can't attack us. The AI will never attack two people at the same time in an offensive war, so... Until we get called for pizza, we could just stall, and then, uh... We're safe for a while. We can't set new rivalries or do other things, but like... <laughs> loot all of Ryzen. If you're a horde, that can make sense, but loot speed is still less than the cost of like full maintenance. And it comes at the cost of not being able to drill or do other things with your army. So I don't look at loot as a source of income. It's just a discount to army maintenance. Does that make sense? Like you're not actually coming out ahead. If you really wanted to make more money, just delete half your army. Like it's way more expensive to have an army than it is to try to... Like even if we put land maintenance to 0% and then looted, 2.4 gold a month with 14 infantry, that can loot 1.4 gold a month. The 4 cav can loot 0.3 times 4, so 0.3 times 4 plus the 1.4, it's 2.6 gold a month. It loot. So we can make 0.2 net profit if we did it while at low maintenance, which is risky because rebels, right? While looting, you're creating devastation, which increases unrest and causes problems and stuff, right? So like, not worth it. If you're a horde, maybe. All right, so, um, I'm gonna continue to hold off until our army is in a better position slightly. Um, one option is to, if he stops being a valid rival, we could rent troops to him. The fact that Ryzen's not in the war also blocks us from renting troops to, um... If Ryzen were in the war, we could rent troops to him, which would have been really nice. 45 gold for 5 Patriarch Authority, or just don't, because we're at zero right now. This doesn't actually cost us anything. Am I willing to pay money for Patriarch Authority? Let's see. Let's say I had a thousand gold. What would I spend it on right now? In order of priority, I would want to bank cash for Admin Tech 4 churches, because they're very strong, um, especially when you want to do, like, base tax clicks in the early game here with Novgorod and whatever, or... Um, I feel like Orthodox... I don't know, they make money from churches a little bit better somehow or something, but, um... I want to upgrade the center of trade in Neva to level 2. I want to build light boats. We already have an army. I don't need another fort, but I wouldn't mind having a fourth fort over here as well. Once this fort's done and projecting it to here and here, that would leave this whole area. And one fort like right here would basically protect our entire country aside from that province. But it's only 3 dev, and it'd still technically be protected behind that fort. So that's kind of like my priority list for money right now. What would I spend money on? Also, why do we have autonomy? What the fuck? We have 49% autonomy in a lot of our land. We just start with autonomy? We need to lower autonomy right away. That's affecting government reform progress and income and force limit and everything. So, sorry. Mental process. So, like... Would I spend 45 gold on Patriarch Authority? I don't need Patriarch Authority until I... 20 years have passed, and I don't need Patriarch Authority just for like 2% or 3% manpower. I think I wouldn't actually spend money right now on this. So I'm gonna say no, based on all that. Doesn't Novgorod have a mission to build churches? Probably. Yeah, what are our missions anyway? <laughs> Novgorod needs to be a state metropolitan in Novgorod, owned by us, and it needs a church in the province of Novgorod with a icon commissioned. 
Do we need two stab? That gets us 10 more Patriarch Authority and 20 years of this stuff. Wow, monthly war exhaustion 0.15 for 20 years is kind of a long time. That's triple, triple, triple optimism. Damn. Wow. Found Arkashun. Build a marketplace or a dock in Calmgary to get this. Six dev and a province modifier to the end of the game, giving dev cost minus 35%. And 10 more trade power. On top of its center of trade? Yes. Wow. That's neat. Permanent claims on Lapronia, Laponia and Perm. Neva needs to be owned by us while having a marketplace and a dock. And we have to be the strongest trade power in the Novgorod node with a fully built navy. That gets us naval dockyard of Neva to the end of the game. Your building time minus 20. Permanent claim on Riga. This wants us to take land from the Muscovites. Did the Livonians ally anyone else? They did. With our 6th shock general, I would normally never be in a position that, right now, I think, to consider attacking the Livonians and the Teutonic Order. But with a 6th shock general and 4 or four cavalry, the stack wipe potential against anyone is so high right now that we could maybe just just attack them. Actually, go in that direction. I was not expecting it. But, you know, sometimes you just get a 6th shock general who has infantry combat ability plus 10%. Like, damn. Yeah, we want to do as much as we can with this general, as while for for however long he's alive, he is amazing. Just more ships built. Also, we have those heavies, which I would prefer to sell. Um, they did make it so that it's harder to sell ships that are not fully maintained, like that have damage, and it's really annoying because. Normally, like, you barely make the cut to make the sale, and then now there's, like, negative one reasons or something, or negative two, and then, like, maybe I shouldn't have mothballed them. Might have been better just to pay the full price. We're about to go to peace. I'm gonna unmothball the heavies. Um... Alright, let's just get out of this war. I think the sooner we get out of this war and do something with our general, the better. We are not taking a Morale of Armies penalty right now, that'd be ridiculous. Moving development from Kexholm to our capital is great. Novgorod's already at 20. We probably do want to expand infrastructure, but uh, we don't need to just yet. Do, 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 do. Yep, we have to accept this. Do, 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 do. I don't need that alert, it's pointless. I know when my, I know when my estates are disloyal game. Alright, let's get our show strength active. While we're black flagged, we could consider doing Kanatiri contracts. Um, we don't need military access through Odiev anymore, but I'm going to keep it for now. The Livonians can also give us military access. Um, let's see. So, we have a valid rival slot. We're not at 50 power projection because we need a third rival set. We could just straight up rival Denmark or Lithuania. Lithuania did ally Poland, so they're very difficult to fight. Sweden is very disloyal. We have relationship slots. We could support independence of Sweden right now. Alternatively, instead of supporting the independence of Sweden, we could wait for England to do it and jump on Sweden and try to take a chunk out of them while they're doing their independence war. If we support their independence, then we obviously can't do that. Still fairly safe to assume that Denmark's a reasonable rival, or... Livonian Order. Again, I would normally never even be in a position to, to actually beat the Livonians right now, but... I think we can straight up murder them. We kill the Livonian stack. If they group the whole army up, all 24,000, we would probably struggle. But, because we're planning on doing like the Scorched Earth approach with our land, we aren't going for prosperity. Um, we could also just let them come to us, and when they come to us, they're going to be in woods, defensive terrain. We've got rivers on all sides from this direction, rivers on sides here and here. Um, they're most likely to come in through this way, and then get stuck on Novgorod. 
River, 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 river. Plus two advantage with six shock. And then on top of that, um, we've got the... We've got the this. Severe winters. No monsoons, unfortunately. Yeah, we're playing on hard. We always play on hard. Alternatively, we could just straight up attack Muscovy right now. If we did attack Muscovy, we would not be going for clay. It would be a preemptive... Um, I still think even with a six shock general, going for clay would be a mistake. I, I just think that it's better to put Muscovy in a economic... Um, make Muscovy weak economically so they can't rein in their subjects and, you know, tax our neighbor. We, we get money, they lose money, we're strong, they're weak. It just makes future wars easier. We don't necessarily want to conquer land right now because we want to do monarch points into development and into getting institution and into ideas and tech and all that stuff. So, must we want to die by your hands and Tver supports you. Tver is our rival, so they don't support us, but they would like for us to assist. The war between Muscovy and Tver will be very short. It's just a level one fort. Garrison's halfway depleted. Um, I believe that they will have a general with some good siege pips, potentially. Bum, bum, bum. Muscovy's got 29,000 troops, and we have 18. Ideally, it would be good to have Miltech 4 if we fight Muscovy, so maybe we do the Livonian Order thing first. Because we are much stronger than Ryzen. Ryzen just lost their army. Ryzen has no friends but they're guaranteed by Lithuania. So who would Muscovy attack next? Subjects. Probably attacks Odiev. No, Odiev's part of a alliance with Lithuania as well. Are we next? We might be next. Kazan? Kazan's got Crimea. We have two potential allies. We could ally Gotland. At least then they stop raiding our coasts. And that's an easy source of manpower, with favors, if we need it. We could also create a trade league, if we can get Odiev to join. Um, we would just have to ally Odiev first. He is at negative 27 reasons because of Lithuania, though. But actually, creating a trade league is not something we can do. Trade leagues are way stronger. Oh, that's right, trade leagues got buffed out the ass. I forgot about that. They increase land force limit and naval force limit now. And they give you, like, manpower. We really need a trade league. Shit, am I gonna have to create trading cities? Ugh. I said I would never do it again. Never again. But they're so... Trade leagues are so much stronger now. They're so much stronger now. I said I would never do it again. All right, you are 27 reasons away from an alliance and 27 reasons away from trade league. Neutral. If we just flip into friendly, we only have two diplomats though. Let's get one claim on Lithuania so we have it, and then stop spying on them. Bum, bum. These two are part of our node. Creating a subject in our node would be good. Torah pets can create palats, which is that many dev. One, two, three, four, five, six provinces. Palatsk is the same one here. Bitabisk is the same one. So it's just all the same. Bum, bum. There's an actual fort here. Level three fort is probably better. Let's get a claim on this and start improving with Odiev. Let's switch to improve relations on that. Um, um, I think we are rivaling the Livonians. Um, um, um. We want to ally the Livonians. Hmm, that is an option. Um, um, um. I don't have a claim on the Livonians, so if we if we were to try to attack the Livonians, it'd basically just be about getting power projection all the way to 100. Um, it would also be about building up army tradition, because we'd get quite a bit from battles. It would build up our prestige, which helps us against Muscovy. But it wouldn't be about expansion, unless we want to take the time to fabricate an actual claim. One of these missions did give us a claim on Riga, but Riga is... 
part of the trade league and would probably be just as difficult to fight. Which mission was it? Bum 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 this one. And that requires marketplace dock. Marketplace requires Diplotech 4, Dock is Diplotech 6, so we get we can't get the claim on Riga for a while. Mm-hmm. Right, Gotland in the trade league? We gotta wait a month, but yeah, he would potentially join. Yeah. Now for our needs, 1% trade share on Gotland's home node, so we just send some chips there. Now that he's our ally, I allied him, right? I didn't. We're going to ally him. Um um, here. These ships can protect trade here. They don't wanna. Because we have no merchant there. Okay, we'll move the merchant from Novgorod for now. That on its own might be enough. Scotland? Yeah, we need to wait one more month. Um, an alliance will take up a relationship slot. We also lose a relationship slot to create the trade league. So, I'd actually be going down to like none. Our PP is slightly small, uh, slightly big. Yay. Alright chat, what do you guys want to do? We gotta decide, are we gonna play nice with the Livonians, or are we going to murder the Livonians? I mean, eventually we're gonna murder the Livonians, but do we want to murder the Livonians now, just because we have the ability, because we have a six-shot guy? Or should we try to focus all of our attention on Muscovy? Murder. Murder. Most likely a peace deal with Livonia Order, Riga, Teutonic Order would be money trade war reps from Teutons, money trade war reps from Riga, um, plus kick him out of the trade league, on all his treaties with people or whatever. As much prestige as we can get from the secondary participants, and then probably another show strength on the Livonians. We'd have a huge truce with the Livonians, but 300 more Monarch points, power projection would be basically 100, right? Because we're going to get 10 for the war deck, plus 30 more from show strength. Um, gets us to Miltech 4. It's possible by the time we win our war with the Livonians, we could have enough Monarch points to take Tech 4, and then do a Tech 4 timing attack on Muscovy. The only downside is that we don't have enough, like, we really don't have much defense. So... When I looked at who Muscovy would go after next, because Livonia, Lithonia is independent and they allied Odiev Ryzan, I think we might be next. And it's it's crucial that we are the one attacking Muscovy. Very important. Because we're going to try to... We're going to use show, show superiority by having a one-way embargo. If we make it about conquesting clay, then there's just... In my experience, there's just no way to beat his 30,000 direct troops, plus 10,000 manpower, plus his, eco his economy and m potential for mercs, plus he's got five subjects, each with 100 manpower per month, each with three or four force limit. Like, it's 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 doable, especially potentially with a six-shock general, but way, 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 way easier to just do a one-way show superiority thing, get 40 war score from battles, peace out for money, war reps, trade power, and then say, suck it and then come back in six years, ten years, whatever it is. It's this, it's the, my preferred opening in this situation. So... I'm a little worried that if we go after the Livonians, that we're going to miss our opportunity right now to do a war against Muscovy in that circumstance with the show superiority. Like, right now, next month, we could attack Muscovy and be on the defensive. And get the war score done. And then after the war's over, we could attack the Livonians for show strength. And then we get Tech 4. And then we fight Muscovy or Clay in the next war. It's tough. We both both have stuff. Hmm. Pain Train, 82. Thank you for your sub. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Odiev is... Are they ever going to be willing to join? Opinion of... Novgorod is at 10. One reason per four opinion. We get 25 reasons, would take 100 opinion. We could show... We could scornfully insult Rise in, but he has a truce. Five-year truce, so... Well, the truce blocks power projection, but I think we would still get opinion with Odiev. It might be possible to get him in if he flips to friendly. 
And uh, I think it's worth it. I'm leaning, honestly, I'm leaning toward Muscovy now. Well, let's do a poll. Let's involve you, Jimmy. You guys can, you can participate. Will you convert to Catholic or Protestant or try to make Orthodox the prime religion? I think it's more consistent for us to flip to the required religion to become the Emperor than it is for us to try to force the Treaty of Westphalia. Because, uh... As an Orthodox, we're only allowed to join the Protestant side of the League, right? No. No, I think you can join both sides. No. You have to be Protestant. No. Stupid mechanic, I don't remember. It's difficult to force it to be a stall, like a stalemate, you know? It's way easier to force it to go one way or the other than it is to force a middle-of-the-road thing. What to do? Livonian... Must die now! Then the third option was to put, was actually to consider allying the Livonians, but that one's looking pretty, kind of weak to me right now. So I don't think we even make that an option. I'm gonna let you guys do this poll, and I'm gonna go to the bathroom and uh, get a bathroom soda, water, get some water from the bathroom, from the, to from the toilet. I ain't seen no plants grow out of no toilet. <laughs> There's a poll in Twitch chat. I'll be right back. One sec. I know we're playing very slow, but it's a difficult start, so hopefully you guys don't mind. Look at me, Chad. I, I got a I got a power aid because I'm a I'm a power gamer. Ben likes power aid, so I've got a bunch of leftover power aid. I never buy this stuff, but it's got electrolytes. It's got electrolytes. Reference. Show strength on Livonia would get Miltech faster than Muskie versus Muskie. True. But, what if Muscovy attacks us while we're in the middle of an offensive war against the Livonians, Teutonic Order, and Riga? And we have tech equivalency. And he's got more men than we do. And he declares for conquest, and he gets 25 ticking war score because he takes Velsk. Because you know he's going to declare reconquest, because he's an idiot. He's got claims on our entire country, but he's got one core, so he's going to declare for reconquest of Velsk, and I can't defend Velsk against him. There's no way to defend this province against 30,000 troops. Even with a six-shot guy. So, um... Hopefully you guys voted correctly. I think there is a very clear, correct choice here. And you did! Muscovy first, 62%. Sorry, right, I closed the poll early, but yeah, let's do it. I think that the Livonian order option will still be there. We will still rival the Livonians um, to get our power projection firmly above 50, and we will also embargo them. But the opportunity here to fight Muscovy while he's focused on, an, on another war is, I think, too good. We want to balance these two armies out. I want them to be black flagged so we can get an early pickoff on that guy, potentially. This guy is going to be the higher maneuver guy. This is going to be this guy. I would prefer for Praskov to not be able to get over here because he is the easiest one for us to get war score against. Followed by Below Zero, Belozeru. 
We probably do want to spend points to get the aristocrats in charge, just for the 5% morale of armies. It's kind of a big deal. Um, let's see. Okay. How did you get all his subjects? How did we get them? How do you mean? We didn't get them. He's still got them all. They're his. What is this? I need the alert. We have unrest. Okay, so do we want to release? Oh, we can release two people. Karelia and Satmi. Karelia would receive four provinces. Exholm, Olenets, White Karelia, Karelia. Too much land, I think, in our primary node. Plus, isn't this one of our potential consecrated metropolitans eventually? Yeah, 15 dev clicks here. The other guy, though, releasing Satmi? Um, actually, because I built the fort, I think it means we shouldn't release the subject. Because this way we project zone of control, and uh, it's better that way. Also, we're at peace. We need a lower autonomy. Bum, 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 bum. I would like to sell my heavies, because I don't think they're necessary. Let's see if we can sell them to literally anyone. Let's come back from both for a sec. We have to do all of our peacetime stuff real quick before Muscovy wins their war. Honestly, I don't care. If I have to sell a heavy to Riga, even if we're going to end up fighting him, that'd be fine. Ships are damaged, minus two. We're at one reason. With 40 gold, it's probably good enough. Right? I think yes. Bum, 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 bum. 40 gold, 40 gold. Selling a ship to Sweden is not possible. Making Lubeck stronger, kind of in my interest, if possible, so that he fights Denmark. Get rid of this one. Alright, we got some money. We want to continue to build light ships. We're on track to have 10. We have a naval force limit of 17. I just want to go straight to naval force limit in light ships. Let's get another couple queued up. Or do we want to start our fourth fort for the future? Fourth fort might actually be more valuable, honestly. Forts cost us 162 at the moment. Hmm. So the declare window. And it showed that you had vassals. Uh, enemy allies. Enemy on this side. Yeah, he's just a little, a little confused. He's heading to Torpets. He is managing to get his army over here. Hmm. I need to pick off that army. It's very important. But I also need to get Gotland into a trade league first. Get one cab to go that way. Um, we want to spy still over the monthly tick on him. Can't rent Kondotieri to Tver because he's a rival. Gotland, do you want to join our trade league? They do. Cool. We now have a trade league. And the effects of the trade league are... 2,000 more max manpower. Scaled by member. Each member gives us 2,000 max manpower. We also get... 2 land force limit. And 4 naval force limit. Per member. Holy crap, man. That's like so much. In fact, that is enough to get us the ability to do a naval doctrine already. Sick. Ship trade power plus 33. Does the most for us overall. Long term. Probably that one. Always. Let's do it. Oop. We do have to flip to monarchy, and we also have to flip religion multiple times. We have to be Eastern. Eastern religious group. So, like, Tangri or whatever. Confucian. To take over the Mandate of Heaven. We need to be either Catholic or Protestant when the League fires, depending on who wins, to become the Emperor. We also need to stop being a monarchy, if I just forgot to mention that. Bear's gonna fall quickly. Um, Peskov is heading to Zubstev. Hopefully he is gonna be in a spot where I can find him and kill him. Swedish Pretender Rebels. Ooh, Swedish Pretender Rebels. Very interesting. And he's very disloyal. I wonder if there's any way that he actually just peacefully becomes independent. Probably not, right? Should we train more Cav? Holy crap. Who am I and what did I do with the Roomba? We have the economy. We have the force limit. We have a six-shock general. 
we don't need them specifically, but like, it it does leverage the six shock, shock general the most. Weird. All right, if Pskov's gonna chill there, I think we could declare. We declare. We sack wipe the three stack, and then we retreat behind our forts, and we wait for the other derps to start coming up here. We go pick off the other derps armies, get some more score from that, and then we have an army over here to overrun as Pskov tries to retrain. Each overrun will be worth three war score. We just do that until he runs out of money or until he runs out of manpower. And then we should have close to 40 war score. And we avoid the crap out of the Muscovite army. This fort is not done yet, though. So we'd have to be very careful about protecting that fort as it's continuing to finish. Maybe position half the army up north and keep it there. Don't you dare build more cavalry. <laughs> What are we? A horde? No, we are a plutocracy. We are a Vechi Republic, which is just a, a fancy type of plutocracy. Kind of like um, Genoa, Lubeck, Venice. Uh, I don't think of any other merchant republics at the start of the game. Those are the three main ones. Oh, Ragusa. Yep. Basically the same thing as their type. Bum, 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 bum. Stack wipes equals good content. True. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. We do have a relationship slot. Um, two, actually, if we get rid of the military access through Odiev, but that's... Hmm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. We don't need more allies if we're going to go on the offensive. All right, I think we're ready. This could be a throw. We might end up losing our progress and have to start over if things go poorly, but um, I think we go for it. Let's train another Streltsy and another regular infantry. Cool. All right, so we're going to revoke our embargo. It's going to take a couple months to actually be able to declare here, but let's... Uh, um, June 1st, we will, not June 1st on the dot, but close, we will revoke our embargo of Mr. Muscovy. Did it ever tell me that my embargo... Do you have to manually embargo subjects of your enemies? Like, I'm not getting a penalty to trade efficiency. I'm not used to that. Apparently there's no trade efficiency penalty for embargoing subjects of your rival. Huh. Weird. If I just, like, never, like, realized that? I guess. So I guess we will embargo all of the subjects. Because why not? Yeah, apparently I'm just dumb and bad and didn't know that. Alright. We just need a diplomat free, and we need to ensure that our army is safe. Come back. Just slow down my spine. I work, but it's okay. Bum, 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 bum. We should have trade dispute. So a one-way embargo against a rival. If you are unfamiliar, we are embargoing everyone but Muscovy, but he's still Muscovy, uh, still embargoing us because it costs you five percent trade efficiency to embargo someone who's not a rival. Right? But, if they have you embargoed, you can counter-embargo for no penalty. So even though he never rivaled us, we rivaled him for free, and he counter-embargoed because it was free. Then you can cancel the embargo, creating a one-way embargo, which triggers the this CB to show up. Trade dispute. Show superiority. War goals to show superiority. Get bonus war score from winning battles. Over 10% war score from battles will give you a ticking war score. 75% cost for transfer trade power. 75% cost for monetary reparations, and 75% or concession of eat and trade steering. So, we also get 200% prestige for the peace deal. So our goal is to take advantage of the thing. We have 19k troops versus their way more than that, but it should be fine. It should be fine. You want me to take a back save, uh, backup save again? We, I guess we could. I mean, it's kind of cheesy, but whatever. But whatever. If I ever unpause the game anyway, how rude. So, we're going to do show, uh, show superiority. And the other thing is that it's because there's no, like, province as a target, um, 
So long as we win some of our battles, we're going to get our Ticking War score, and we don't have to worry about him camping out in Velsk or some other location where we can't move in. Right? It's very dangerous to move an army that's large enough to fight Muscovy, even in your own land, due to the, the winters, and also due to the rivers and the defensive terrain. Like, we don't want to be doing that. We want them coming to us into defensive terrain. Iron rivers, if possible. So, with that all being said, July 10th, we're going to go. Leroy freaking Jenkins. Get him. We're going to do that and that. Arriving on the 22nd and the 18th. Um, we aren't going to have enough for a overrun. Let's put um, you here and you here, see if we can sync them up a little bit better. 18th and 21st is already happening. Um, I actually do want them to both arrive on the same day. I'm going to slow that down a little bit. 21st, 21st. And again, the goal, we're trying to stack wipe this guy in particular because we want him to train over here. Hopefully they don't reinforce in time. If they do, um, that will be not ideal, but we still end up with more overall war score because of the... Um, we get three war score for each overrun over here. We'll lose one fight to win more, right? So, should be fine. In fact, you never know. Honestly, we're the defender behind a river. Um, let's... Ah. We spend military points for 5% morale of armies. It's not going to affect our current morale, but it will affect morale damage. You think there's a chance we could win? We have infantry combat ability plus 10%. He's got a 3-4. We have a 0-6. Which is effectively a 0-8 because of the... Wait, is he? Yeah, he is. We have four maneuvers, so he can't negate the river crossing. We have a four shock advantage. He's got more cav than we do. Hmm. Let's see how the first rolls go. I'm not sure. We do want to keep improving here. We probably want to get a claim on you. We want to move our trade guy back to here. Guy yeah, that's in the Baltic. Let's see how the first roll goes. He has his two penalty. He rolled an eight in the uh, fire phase. We rolled a zero. Nice job, of course. We rolled a four versus his eight. We have to fight for 12 days. We're probably going to lose more than we... God, seriously? Frickin... 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 There's our seven versus a four, at least. But... Well, five versus four, technically. We are getting absolutely crushed. Are you kidding? Ow. 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 I don't... like... what? <laughs> no. 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 No, that, that, that's not appropriate at all. Um... I'm honestly, like, flummoxed here, like... We... we had a, a four-shock advantage. We had 20 troops. We couldn't even survive four rounds of combat. I mean, what were his rolls again? Eight, eight, nine? What was his fourth roll? Let's do a little bit more of a deep dive here. We are Eastern Tech. He is also Eastern Tech. So we have the same unit type, which means it's not like he has a, a, a comparative advantage in his cavalry or something. It's not like he's a horde. That is just crazy. Wow. 8895. Yeah, new combat system. Um, hmm. Just trying to decide, is it still possible to win from this position? We do have a defensive, like, wall here to, to train behind. We could rebuild. We got half of our manpower back because when you get stack wiped, you, you get half the manpower losses back into your pool. We don't have a lot of money, but we could take one loan and rebuild. We got the ability to build up to... If I can get an 11 stack, we can still overrun one stack. And we did stack wipe Biskov. Um, We got a crap ton of war exhaustion, and also we got army tradition for that loss, but yeah, he rolled 8895, and we rolled a 0 in the fire, where he does have a fire advantage phase. Fire, fire advantage from his 3. Which is effectively only a 1 because of the rain and river crossing, but still. Lucky Nations get a bonus on combat rolls. 
Technically, according to all of the people at Paradox, no. But anecdotally, based on personal experience, yes. Did you see that? The fuck was that? Crazy. Will the ticking war score happen because of that? No, we're at negative four. I'll, I'll do it either way. I mean, I'll let you guys decide. If you want me to play this out, I do think it's possible to still win this war. It'll obviously be much harder, but... Um, you know, it's up to you. Either way. I'm good either way. Instead of trying to engage that three stack of Piskov's army, we could just back off and just go focus on picking off the stragglers as they move into our land up here instead, and eventually Piskov will move on to something. You know, we don't have to move into his land. It was an aggressive thing. I didn't think he'd reinforce. Honestly, I thought that he would just let the three stack die, but... I'll do. Um, reload. Save. Versus play it out. Up to you, Jimmy. Do you want to see, do you want to see the magic, or do you want to just reload? It probably does sound kind of crazy, like, what? You think you can win? <laughs> He's got 40,000 troops, are you crazy? Well, there's a reason why we declared the war. Um, we've done this in previous runs. We've done it as Novgorod in previous runs. It is still possible. It's... Essential that we have an 11 stack for quick overruns, but The run will be long and tedious even without this, so just reload. It's a fair point, yeah Keep in mind we didn't lose the general he still exists. He just he he just got shamed. I mean he should kill himself obviously, but uh, you know We've got two good forts we can turn on defensiveness we don't have a fort maintenance, fort defense guy, but we could switch to one if we really wanted to. 20% fort defense is six more days per phase. We should pre-scorch the land, even though it's our capital. And, uh... Bum, 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 bum. See what the poll is. You guys got 30 seconds left on the poll. I haven't looked at it yet. Whatever you guys choose, honestly. Seriously. Bum, 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 bum. I mean, maybe we should have made those last two force limit into cavalry. <laughs> maybe we should also have spent 10 military points for the 5% morale of armies. That might have made a difference. In fact, what are his numbers? Does he have like... No, we actually have a morale advantage over him. And yet... Yeah, 5% discipline does does affect it, but not enough to like justify that much. It was it was just the rolls that caused him to win that hard. Results are 66% in favor of just reloading the save. Okay. Well, we're not going to just like save scum the um the fight, you know? I'm not going to just do the fight over and over again until we win. Let's just attack it from a different direction. Like we'll still declare the war, but we won't um go after the perm stack. We'll tackle it in a different direction. Does he have Cossack bonus or something? It's difficult to see combat advantages for infantry and cavalry and artillery now because a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Paradox decided to remove it from the combat interface. And they never put it back. They also didn't add it to the ledger. So, aside from noticing that their general has, like, combat ability plus 10, or noticing their national ideas or their ID groups, it's... Hard to know if they have the Cossacks, um, estate combat ability to cavalry turned on or not. In fact, it might be, I think it might even just be impossible to know, honestly. Because you can't, you can't inspect a country's estate status, right? Is there even a way to, like, know how much Muscovy's estate influence is? I, I don't think there is. Alright, so, uh, we were going to declare, we declared on the 10th, I believe. So we're just gonna back off. Instead. 
and be in position to deal with uh, stragglers that come up north. Go here, and we'll go like here to here. We have two force summit available, and we are still training the troops. Okay. Cool. Okay, right, we'll give it a go. Should we spend 10 military points for five morale of armies in case we get into a fight? Ideally, we don't get into any fights with Muscovy directly. That's not the intent. The intent is to prey upon his subjects. Or to prey upon his leaderless stacks, not fight that 3-4. So, shouldn't need the 5 morale, but maybe. We should also pre-scorch. This guy will take care of it. Do you ally Kazan or something? No. We, uh, we are at peace. We're declaring a war that's not for a claim, so we would need to have favors. But most people don't want to ally us aside from, like, Gotland. We should, we should probably actually spend this relationship on Gotland. Just to get some favors built up and be able to, uh, get manpower out of it. Even if it's just manpower once every five year, years, that's useful, I guess. And we are at three out of three relations. This one won't be a relation if we can get him to join the League, which will potentially happen eventually. Okay, we are going to Scorch here. Did I already? Can't Scorch because we're not at war, right? You go here, you go here. Hit the four maneuver guy here. You can chill here. All right. Take two. We need to revoke embargo. I forgot to do that. Nope. He revoked the embargo on us, so we missed the timing. So now we gotta. Okay. <laughs> We gotta re-embargo him, and wait till he embargoes us again, and then cancel the embargo. They do notice that you have revoked it, and then they see the trade efficiency penalty for having a bad embargo, and then they cancel it, so... It's easier when they're your rival, because then they'll just keep it active, but... Whatever. Please embargo me. Um, um, um. Watch him not do it now, because he's a jerk. 1444. Expulsion of merchants. Lithuania's opinion goes down. Sure. Yeah, we don't need to hunt pirates anymore. You're right. Did I move my merchant back? Did not. Need to get him back. Bum, bum, bum. He's not going to do it. I'm wondering if it's because he's in an offensive war. It might be where he will not update things like this until he's at peace. Which is kind of annoying. I still have the backup save from before our war deck, so... Um, we could still act quickly if we have to. Like, if he just refuses to embargo us and block this opportunity, um, I'd be kind of annoyed. Gain stab or gain prestige? Secret societies. Give influence to the guilds at the cost of the aristocrats, but gain stability. We need two stab for a mission, which uh, we will be to turn this one in pretty early. We just need a church we can build soon. The stab's kind of good. Losing prestige is not great. Advisor cost is trash, though, so no thanks. We'll take this. Stupid Muscovy. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Watch him just, if he just doesn't ever embargo us again and just attacks us directly for Conquest of Velsk, then um, I'm probably going to roll back to that same save so that we can still take advantage of it. Because I want to show how it works, you know. It's a fun way to win the war against Muscovy. Embargo me, bro. Or at least rival me. Or probably not valid. Bum, bum, bum. We're at negative 18 reasons, four reasons per... One reason per four opinions, so a scornful insult's worth six. Diplo rep would help too, but... We don't want to pay full price for that guy. Bum, 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 bum. Embargo me, bro. Stop not embargoing me. Why are you not embargoing me? Bum, bum, bum. Should we reload the save? Our dude just died. Darn. He's about to get reelected in a year. Uh, let's see. Do we want... Probably military points. Try to get that mil advantage faster. 
20 influence to the aristocrats, putting them in charge is also reasonable. Let's do that. And they've taken over, and he is a what? Tolerant man. We don't need him as a general, so let's not make him one. He is 58. Not probably going to re re-elect him for very off very many uh, words. Holy shit. We're not going to re-elect him, so I guess we'll make him into a guy. He's just not going to re-embargo us. Apparently. Alright, we're going to go back to that save again. And just attack him right away. Because again, that's like the whole point of my opening moves with this country. And he's not cooperating. What about spending Patriarch Authority for the 5% disc versus Muscovy? 5% uh, discipline is... Like, you still... It's not enough. You'd need, like, 30% discipline to try to fight Muscovy head-to-head, one-on-one, and actually, like, just beat his army instead of doing something kind of cheesy like we're doing. So, instead of doing discipline, we did construction cost and minus 10% dev cost. Alright, so this time we'll just just attack him, but then not try to go into his land. Since it's clear that he's going to cancel the embargo and break my, my plan. Okay, you're going to go there, you're going to go there. And we're going to just declare on the 6th or whatever. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. We had not allied you yet. Uh oh. I do want a proper alliance with him. Also, we need to do our not hunt pirates stuff again. Also, we need to move our merchant back. And we need to get ready to pre embargo or uh, scorch like lucky. Okay. As soon as we get a dip map back, please don't cancel. You son of a bitch. He's canceling it because I reloaded the save. Apparently there's a prompt or trigger on save reload. You know how they tend to do peace deals when you reload the save? Apparently there's another check here to look for things like trade efficiency minus 5 from bad embargoes. Alright, I'm gonna try it one more time. If I can... if the ver I, We won't get the alliance with Gotland. Let's just try it with the very first available diplomat to declare war. And if he cancels the embargo too quickly, then I'm just going to give up for now. And we'll have to attack it from a different direction. What CBs do we have versus his vassals? Um, good opportunity, maybe. Uh, I wasn't looking. Did any of his did any of his subjects embargo us? Maybe we can get uh, the CB against one of the subjects. I did try embargoing. Um, I noticed that he wasn't embargoing us, and then we played it out for like four, five, six months, and he, he never went back to embargoing us while he was in his war. This is not, he's not rivaled to us. We're rivaled to him, but he's not rivaled to us. Uh, let's see. Yeah, only... Um, only Muscovy is currently embargoing us. So we're going to just try to declare on the very first opportunity, which is the 10th of July. So he just has to keep the embargo active for nine days. Please don't break it right away. One day. Two days. There is a cheesy thing you can do. <laughs> because we know that the calculation to redo stuff happens, like, after reloading the save, you can advance the game one or two days. Make a new save, reload the game, load that save, and then you'll go like another one or two days. <laughs> you know? So let's just see. If he just lets me go all the way to the 10th. Yeah, okay. We'll just do it like this. You're not getting away from us so easy, buddy. Alright, game on. Let's go. This guy wants to come here. 
He's arriving on the 28th. We can be here. That's actually ideal. This guy's going to go through, scorch that one. These armies are going to go here, and then we're going to be able to fight the three stack. Okay. Like, legit game on. We're good. And we can't go back to spying yet, but... Scorch here. He is locked, moving to Colm. We'll grab our six guy here. Bum, bum. This should be a easy battle for some stuff. Let's get our ships properly doing what they're supposed to do now because we are actually moving on with the save file. So that was the right fleet, was it? Yep. Okay, four war score from battles. And now we want to hide between the zones of control while also avoiding him. And arrive on the 22nd with no leader. Honestly, I think we Scorch Calm also to slow this army's ability to get there and try to get him to commit to a fight where we can have our full army. So he does not have the rest of the troops in position and his general's tied up. Fifth and sixth, if we go to Ingerman then, then go to here, we'll be there on the 28th still. So we have plenty of time. I don't think he's going to see this coming. That's 24 troops now, though. Coming in piecemeal a little bit. Behind a river. But this time, he doesn't have his three fire, four shock general. In fact, all he's got is a 1-1 one, one general right now. So we have effectively an eight shock, a two fire, eight shock general here versus their 1-1 one, one general. And we've got 20,000 troops. This is an unnecessary risk, but I'm going to take it anyway because it'll be glorious. It's actually pre-reinforced to see if some of them don't want to come. They might all commit. Restack broke off. Let's uh, combine, split, and put the king in charge just in case the other guy dies. Cross your fingers. Uh, we don't have the icon on, though. We also don't have our morale on here. We can turn it on right now and get a morale recovery tick to take us a little bit higher. Let's do that. Although, it might not update properly, since it takes a day to update to the new faction. We could switch to a different level 1 advisor, but they aren't combat related. Did we actually go higher on morale? Good. 2.88 out of 2.9. And he is at 2.57. He does have 5 discipline advantage, but... Okay, if we roll like shit here, I'm gonna... it's just clearly cursed. He rolled a 3 versus our 5. Good. He rolled a 7 versus our 11 total. Nice. 5 versus 11. Just crush. Get him. And that's actually it. They're breaking their Siege of Tver. Fucking awesome. We win. GG. No re. Cool. Yeah. Killed 9,000 troops. Lost 4,000 troops. Good deal. And now we're waiting for these. A Bardish infantry will be fielded on the 6th of October and on the 10th of October. So we just hang out nearby and be prepared to overrun those as they pop out. So that's already enough war score for the ticking war score to build up, starting next month. We do want to spy in Muscovy more. And the fact that he broke his siege just, like, reset his war. Like, it's going to be great. We have a lot of reinforcing to do, but that's okay. We could switch to reinforcement guy, just to try to get the army at full strength quicker, but... Okay, that guy pops out on the 10th, this guy pops out on the 6th. We will go here now, and then here, and then here. Um, it's not necessary for it to be an overrun. Actually go like this. That guy's not gonna be able to get away. Only four days behind. Also, this guy will keep training as long as you don't start the siege. So we can go here, and then start the process of going here. We won't be there till the 13th, which means on the 10th he'll pop out and get overrun. Yeah, we just do this. Maybe two overruns, another six war score, minimum. Um, bum, bum, four war score for that, plus another 3.3 for that. Thank you, Pskov. The Great Cipher of Ev Timmy the Second. Gain prestige or get yearly corruption? Prestige good. I like prestige. Winter is coming. Yeah, that was an awesome battle. Let's pretend like that was what happened the very first time. 8th of December and the 5th of December. Same thing as before, we'll just chill for a month. Supply is not great here, so we probably do want to pull some of the troops off. Go up, like, to Neva with that stack. 
And there will be small, small straggler armies up here. So, in fact, let's do half of the cav. And we're not going to be able to put together an army that's large enough to overrun. But um, let's send, like, these troops up to here to try to pick up some more score from battles, or at least force the subjects away. From here, we want to be there on December the, like, 1st or 2nd. And that's enough troops just to do an overrun, which is convenient. Um, arriving on the 20th, which is ideal. Four and three. Gain Patriarch Authority or gain Admin Points. We don't have any Patriarch Authority, so again, this is just straight up gain Admin Points. Honestly, I think Admin Points are more valuable to us right now. Let's just do that. We're at 27 war score, 1.2 ticking, 30 war score from battles, only 10 more available. If we can prevent him from finishing his Siege of Tver, that's also really good. Because he'll just have to start over again, you know? Now we're looking at February the 5th and February the 6th. Okay, guy's heading to Colmgree. We can intercept. Let's swap to our better general here. Pick that army off, that one stack, and chase the other one. You're going to be there on the... February it was. The war score for that. Let's actually go to Shenkurs because I don't see any other troops and we should be able to intercept Perm's army. You guys are going to arrive on the... well, the 1st of February. 2nd of February actually, so we avoid attrition. Two more overruns. That'll probably cap our war score from battles. He is... sneaky and turned around. Sneaky bastard. Um, fine. Yeah, I talked about that earlier, Borgaras. It doesn't work on very hard because you don't get the three war score for one stacks. You can still do it if you beat, like, the three or four stacks. You'd have to allow them to build both and merge them, and then you should still be able to get it. Like, this two stack would still generate war score for very hard difficulty. How scared are we of Lithuania? Do they have a CBE? They currently do not have a CB, no. They are our rival. Um, we are embargoing them. But they're embargoing us back. So, aren't they? Am I crazy? I don't recognize... Wait, he's my rival, isn't he? Oh, no, we never rivaled him. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We never rivaled Lithuania. He rivaled us, but we didn't rival him. Because he's allied to Poland and I didn't want to fight Poland. All right, so our goal is to just do something like this. Just establish a peace deal. So as soon as he's willing to give us uh, war reps, ideally transfer trade and money would be the, the dream. 52 war score is kind of a big ask. Uh, direct money is not as valuable as the trade power. Notice how the trade power cost is only 23 instead of 30. Um, war reps gives more overall money for war score than direct money does. It also doesn't cost us inflation. So, um, you know, if we have to, we'll just go for, like, something like this. But if we can, we can get 500 gold as well. Save to Siege Peskov. Well, soon we're not going to be able to get any war score from battles, right? We're already going to be at the cap. We're at 38. This next battle right here is going to be capped war score from battles. We can get another up to 23 from the ticking war score if we want to be patient. But the main thing is going to be to just get his enthusiasm down. So, like... Breaking this siege again is high priority now. We're going to try to do that if we can. We don't have access there. Apparently. Which is weird. But I can't relieve the siege. Let's come through here. Let's see if we can go this way. No, we have to go like that. Okay. This army is a little bit exposed and behind enemy lines. Not, not a huge fan of that. Muscovy's army is the most important one to target if we can see leaderless stacks. Because... We want to potentially put the subjects into a position where they band together in disloyalty, but they won't do that if we keep stack wiping only the subjects. We should also still keep an eye on Peskov's army, just so he doesn't start annoying me. Um, we've got a war stack and a leaderless stack trying to reinforce. They will be there on the 
16th. We arrive on the 3rd. We've got almost two full weeks to beat this army. We probably stack wipe it. And now we definitely want to Scorch Earth to stutter the arrival of the armies. But I think what we want to do is Scorch on the 14th. Because if we Scorch right now, it just slows both of the armies down by, uh, by a bit. If we Scorch on the 14th, it dispar disparately slows down the 20th, the army on the 20th, by more. Does that make sense? We should be able to beat that 8 stack. No river crossing, but good general. Should be fine. This army is also going to head north. The fact that Tver won't give me military access and that I can't break the siege is really annoying. We'll be able to go there after they occupy it, but I can't stop them from occupying it. So yeah, we'll Scorch on the 14th. Which means that now we're fighting the... 8 stack on the 15th and the 4 stack on the 26th and everyone else in the 1st. Not sure if we're going to be able to beat all of these. Probably not, actually. Got a gift from Kazan. Okay, we still have some days available until the other army arrives, but not enough to get our stack wipe in. Okay. We have a total number of troops coming in that's going to exceed our ability to fight, so I think we do retreat here to Neva. We lose three war score, but as long as we have a buffer of victories, we will still stay at the 40 war score cap. That's not enough troops to do a siege. Muskie's down to medium enthusiasm. Let's see how he's looking for peace deal. We could peace out for not the things that I want yet. Bum, bum, bum. But direct money equals loans. True, right. But if you had to choose, like if you're in a position where you can't get them to agree to more, it's better to take war reps over direct cash, is what I was trying to explain. Hopefully this fort is still protected. July of 47, a couple more months and we'll have that fort done. You can protect trade in Novgorod. You guys can protect trade in Novgorod. This ship can protect trade in Novgorod. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, enjoy that attrition, buddy. 5% attrition. 5%. Normal winter. Arctic. Nice. Nice, Sue. Severe winter. Hit. Boned. That fort ever does fall. What did he declare for? He declared for Kashin. We could break his ticking war score by marching an army through to Kashin. A little bit risky, and it would still take a month to do the siege. This is all part of the Novgorod node. We almost have enough to get a Inland Routes bonus active. I think we're better off just waiting in case this army is able to actually make progress. He has only one maneuver and is suffering 4% attrition. This army is never going to reinforce above 3k. We could go occupy and besiege his capital. Nope, we don't need to. There are currently rebels. Sir. Sir. It's the rebels. They're here. The winged Tassars have arrived in rebel form. So he's got ongoing uh, revolts in Muscovy plus 6. It is enough troops to do the siege. We could usurp control of the siege when they get to the point where they're potentially going to succeed and then try to take the capital. Um, our army is good at that. Since this army can't reinforce, I'm going to actually back the army off and go pick off this guy's army instead. Make sure you're there, make sure you're here. It would be better to do an overrun just so that we're not wasting manpower. We are completely out of manpower now. And we do want to make sure we're reinforcing the cavalry and the streltsy. So I think we consolidate the infantry out of the stack. And I'm going to wait for the these guys to arrive. Have them do it instead. Swap the commander here. Put this guy here. A little bit more buffer for our max war score. Muscovy might be able to finish the siege now because he did bring the whole army here, but... Bum, 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 bum. We should have our fort finishing very soon, next month. 
Gotta make sure that it does have a couple months to reinforce the garrison. Sometimes the AI snipes it while it's... They always know when castles are about to finish. It's really irritating. Gotta keep in mind what we have scorched. I scorched Onega, and I scorched Lucky, Kolm, and Novgorod. So those are the places we want to fight around. And therefore, we want to back our army off as much as we can to incentivize them to try to siege this land. We're gonna hide a few provinces back, try to get Muscovy to go after our capital. Um, we do now have our fort here, projecting zone of control. Don't care about this land, it's trash. Doesn't matter to us. You guys go to... Relia, you guys go to Kexholm. Bear got full annexed. Well, cool. Kelsey costs no manpower to hire, so it's better consolidate first. Streltsy costs no manpower to hire? What are you talking about? It says right here, not enough manpower. I think you're crazy, dude. You need at least 1k manpower to start hiring them. Anyone else confirm that? That seems suspect. I remember a long time ago when, um, what were the, what were the ones owned by the hordes called? The purple ones. They didn't cost manpower, but that got changed, and I'm pretty sure they changed it for all sub, like, special unit types. It is true. They are free. Holy crap. Huh. That sounds like a bug, to be honest, but okay. So if you have a thousand manpower... You're allowed to click the higher Streltsy button. Weird. Okay. Today I learned. So, they're going to occupy everything that isn't in zone of control. So we lose control of all of this, but no ticking war score. Once all of the things that aren't in zone of control are occupied, they're either going to move on to this province, this province, or this province, and then we're going to murder them. Or, they're just going to suffer outrageous attrition due to winter, and eventually their enthusiasm will go down, or eventually the ticking war score will cap out. One of the two. Make sure we got this guy here. Nice, we actually have a battlefield medic. That's a great trait to have for the backup general. We're gonna just, again, ignore this land. We want them to siege this, because then they have to go to the forts. It's in our interest for them to do it. Picking off Perm's army would be fine, if possible. Make sure we have our better general here now. We should also have these two calves as part of that primary stack, instead of nine and two. We want all of the cav doing all of the fighting, every fight, if we can. I'm not even going to bother unseaging this, because again, I think I explained why. We want to incentivize them to come to our forts. Bum bum. So, you actually think it's better to consolidate your Streltsy? That's insane. What a weird situation. Start drilling? Yeah, you want to drill to try to encourage them to come over? No. 1131 one, general. Did he lose his 343? Three, three? Wow. Dude, Muscovy's getting boned now. They wasted all of their good luck in that very first false start war. They lost their good general. They have rebels in their capital. 35% chance their capital falls now. Yeah. Heading into Colm. Good. Neva has 23 supply. Let's put the whole army there now. Bum, 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 bum. He did bypass one of the river crossings, but we could take that fight. I don't think we need to, though. Bum, bum, bum. It would be a good fight to take if we could make Muscovy's entire army disappear so that his subjects become disloyal, though. Is that his whole army? He's got 22k troops, and I see 17 of them. Bum, 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 bum. A 1-1 one, one general versus our 6 shock with defensive terrain. We're a 1-6 master of arms versus a... A 1-1. One, one. Sorry, a 1-7, essentially. Maybe we take the fight. Maybe we stall until we have Miltek 4. Hmm. Perfect timing for rebels to spawn and have must be deal with them all, yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Option B is to go fight the seven, uh, 16k troops, 15k troops that are here and try to take his capital ourselves. We're already doing what we need to do, right? We don't need to kill his army and make his subjects disloyal. The whole goal is to create a truce and give us money, make him lose money, give us trade power, 
etc etc so getting getting greedy I think is a big risk for me here because assuming that we end this war in a position of power we immediately have a new expansion opportunity with the Livonians who I was supposed to be spying on by the way to get a claim but I forgot when we were reloading saves and stuff um I come back from Muscovy actually since we don't really need the spy network on him we're not actually sieging his provinces How greedy do we feel? Why is he on high enthusiasm right now? Because he's a crazy boy. He's only barely high. Length of war is still only at 31. He thinks he's making gains. There was a shift in total war score uh, 90 days ago. Since 90 days ago. Due to these occupations. That's where the extra enthusiasm came from. I think we take this fight. It's direct war leader. Um, of course he rolls a 9 in the fire phase versus R1. Don't you dare. 7 versus a 1. It's not going to be a stack wipe, but it's direct damage on him. Ugh, about 1 to 1 trade. We don't like 1 to 1 trades. But, if it makes the subjects become disloyal, maybe it's worth it. We will consolidate our infantry. Let's pull the... Do you... Is there ever a circumstance where you like, try to combine two Streltsies and then retrain another one? That could be weird. Catch the special ones, I guess, for now. I'm still just going to do it this way. It seems more correct to me. Don't really want to fight the subjects. There is another troop training here on the 31st of March. I'm going to head back to Neva. Try to identify where his other army is. They are trying to reinforce. They might be scared of our army and not try to go if we go here. They're locked, but it's scorched. We're not arriving until the third. I don't want to fight the subjects. It's just not. Again, we don't care about prosperity. We're not worried about that kind of stuff. So, so if they want to they want to attempt to siege our fort and suffer 4% attrition every month, we're for it. Especially if it's Muscovy's army. Money from some people is cool. We can take tech. Why not use the free company? Um, I mean, we can now. Earlier we had manpower, now we don't. We have no pro no professionalism to protect. Um, the free company is not going to recover morale very fast, but we have room almost. If we have enough room, I'll probably swap into it. Alright, looks like that Muscovite army might be heading back to Lucky again. If he can't get the 9.5k stack there... We're going to come in behind him and try to isolate the two stacks. We don't have access to Lithuania, and we scorched Colm, so yeah, that 7.8 stack is trapped now. Very reasonable chance that we can stack wipe it. Third army is now movement locked. They can't turn around. We'll do this. Based on the fact that we're doing this fight, maybe we do hire the free company. Since we know that we're going to lose some troops and open up some force limit. Stack wipe it, please. Please. Got it. Cool. How are those subject, sub, yeah, subjects looking? 26, 12, 18, 12, and 10. Should update if possible. Alright, we'll consolidate again. We actually don't have defensiveness on right now. We should. Um, 32 war score. We're at 8.8 .8 from the ticking war score. We could go and unoccupy stuff. This guy is heading up to White Corellia now. 1-1 one, one General. We will once again pursue Muscovy's army directly. Taking battles when we're at 40 war score from battles is kind of silly. The only reason I'm doing it is because I'm trying to make the subjects disloyal. Which is kind of... greedy. If we unoccupy everything, that looks to me like maybe 10 total war score. A swing in war score of 10 would probably give us Novgorod is making gains as a enthusiasm modifier, which would then cause Muscovy to go to low enthusiasm and probably give us our peace deal. We could take Burks now. Yeah. 
we're probably going to need the mercs for future wars anyway, right? If we want to continue, like, fighting off uh, Lithuania, or Livonian Order. Lenets on the 23rd of September, behind a river. So we could get a 2 advantage here. 12k versus 9.8k, 14th, 23rd. Drive on the 22nd, see if we can get him locked. We got him blocked. Now we have an advantage. Cool. Bum, 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 bum. Stack wipe. Boom. And then Muscovy had four troops with 1,000 manpower. There's a wall breach in our capital, unfortunately. We have low enthusiasm. Next monthly tick, we get an extra war score from the ticking war score. Still no chance for the fort to fall. Let's try to quickly occupy, unoccupy all these provinces. We're over the force limit by one. We can get rid of this troop. All right, so we're gonna send. Those over there. Keep the three stack here. Have these guys go here. Yeah, the wall breach is kind of nasty. His capital did fall. I just want to get... If he's willing to agree to the peace deal now, I'll do the deal. Right? Money, war up. Uh, we want this. We're pushing for this based on how those battles went. This guy can go here to Torzok. This guy can go to here. And we are just trying to get as many of these provinces unoccupied as we can to spike the war score up and then take our deal before there's a chance that falls. Kazan just attacked Muscovy. Okay, I think we did it, chat. I think we won the game. Bum, bum, bum. Feels like we did. Bum. Crap, I broke that one. Shit. 7% chance. Go up to here, go up to here. We're at 45 war score. Is he willing to agree? He is. Alright, sooner we get out, the sooner we can sack him again. Just go bankrupt, lol. What else can we do with this last little bit of war score? More war score spent is actually bad, I think, because we actually want the truce to be shorter. The shorter the truce is, the sooner we can tax him again. So this is this is perfect. War reps, trade power, plus 560 monies. Go. Done. GG. It worked. Um, and the next time we fight him, we'll have Miltek 4 advantage, and he'll potentially be bankrupt. And also weak, and also might have disloyal subjects. 40%, 26%, 31%, 26%, 23%. No humiliate. Um, it would take too much war score for 40. And also we already have show strength from our war against Tver. Tver stopped existing, so we do have a new rival. Probably do rival Denmark. We'll probably do embargo Denmark. Any chance that we can get more people to join our trade league now? Yes. We also have the spy network required for a claim on the Livonians. Um, claim on one of these two is the only option. I guess we'll take Reval. Let's get another member of our trade league. That's going to put us over the relationship lit? No. I never allied Gotland is why. We probably do ally Gotland. Just for, again, manpower over time and stuff. Since we're not at war, we can get rid of the aristocrats, put the traders in charge again. Or we can do the guilds. Um, we can take tech. No one from our tech group is likely, I think, to get tech ahead of anyone else. So we probably do just take the tech. You know, don't even worry about it. Denmark still have Sweden? Yeah, it's only been five years. Sweden is... Uh, 100% disloyal, but they are still a subject, for sure. Alright, do we have any real loans? No? We have 600 monies. Um, let's pay off most of our loans. In fact, I think we pay them all off now. And that means we have room for another click here. I do want, I think, private trade fleets eventually. Bum, 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 bum. What do you think? I think so. It's a reasonable one. It does come at the cost 
of being able to eventually uh, like grant loans again. Sometimes 1% interest loans are good, but I don't think we're going to need them anymore. I think economically we're going to be doing great. No troops, no manpower, five vassals that are loyal. Must be nice to be the AI. <laughs> well, they are considering his economic potential for mercs and stuff as well. So it's not just manpower, but yeah. They will probably not be loyal for much longer. Just take tech? Let me just take tech. Yeah. More innovativeness is, I still think, more valuable than, like, using these monarch points to dev push the capital to get the institution sooner, you know? I mean, it is, it's potentially 12 innovativeness. It's good. We'll take tech. That means we can build churches. We need a church in the capital. Let's put the guilds in charge. Let's take admin points. Get them in charge. Construction cost minus 10. We can now build marketplaces for cheap. Churches for 72. Novgorod needs a church for this mission. Um, center of trade might be better to build first, though, because I'm not going to bump stab to two. We have no admin points. Let's actually build the trade focused stuff first. One, two, three. Bum, 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 bum. Do some, uh, well, are we, do we want to drill? We have war exhaustion, I assume. 3.49. Drilling for a bit's probably reasonable. Or we could go try to attack the Livonians. We will have Miltech 4 very soon. But a little bit of time spent drilling and letting war exhaustion come down seems very reasonable. Do, 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 do. Rebels or uh, mercs can suppress. <laughs> We have room for one more troop. We have room for one more Streltsy. We could spy on Denmark. Our projection could be better. We don't have a scornful insult active. Let's uh, insult Denmark, I guess. I forgot to re-embargo Muscovy. Shit. I knew I was going to forget that. When you create the one-way embargo by revoking your embargo, you can then immediately turn around and embargo <laughs> in a month. But I forgot. So now we're not embargoing Muscovy, which is affecting income. Boo! Showing a disaster, but the disaster is growing at 1% per month, and it's just because the burgers don't have more than 60 loyalty, but they trend to 72, so it shouldn't be a problem. You take tech. There's a chance that uh, maybe someone takes Miltech for... This is the most likely one with our tech group. Like Lithuania or Sweden or somebody could do it, but... We want to invalidate our rivals. Livonian order might get invalidated. Muscovy and Denmark won't. So the plan was to attack the Livonians after the Muscovite war in order to get to tech 4 quicker, but now we're already on tech 4. We could still do another show strength on the Livonians. Where are the Particularists going to rise up? In Velsk. Over here. It will take a while to get over there, but I have Rebel Suppression on. Um, they'll get there eventually, it's fine. Do, do. Let's take land. Yeah, we have a claim on the Livonians now, so we could take for... we could attack for clay. However... You gotta keep in mind, we're in a isolated part of the world. We're gonna need a lot of monarch points to go into getting the institution if we don't want to pay huge amounts of penalty in tech cost over time. So, generally, I would usually prefer to dev the institution over taking clay. More overall long term benefit. Bum, bum, bum. Which also incentivizes doing another show strength on the Livonians. You know, 300 more Monarch points from the Livonians, plus money and war reps and trade power from Teutonic Order and Riga, really locks down our control of this node, which again increases goods produced in the node, and it also helps us to handle the obstacle we have coming up, which is that we're going to not have the institution and be behind Diamond Tech and, you know, etc. Does the Livonians have the institution? No one has the institution. We have feudalism. We're talking about 
Renaissance, which is going to spawn in a year. I'm just planning ahead. And they're very unlikely to get it very quickly because it'll spawn in Italy. The only land that, like, gets the institution spread decently is this state over here in Flanders. I don't know why, but it's special. It has extra modifiers to spread rate for the Renaissance. And beyond that, like, waiting for the institution to, like, passively spread through all of Europe is going to be decades. Just decades. Bet you Republic with Lottery had you drowning in Monarch Points. You want to go... The Lottery? When's that? Um. Um. Is it Tier 2 or Tier 3? Meritocratic rule. No. I guess it must be Tier 3. Um, um, that has term duration 4. Um, um, um. Speeding up the term duration is very appealing. We have 6 year term duration right now. Doo -doo. Mortician. This one? Election by lottery? I mean, in my experience... Hmm. All skills of the elected rulers change by one, so you get plus three guaranteed, but then you can't re-elect. You do or don't get to see their stats before you choose. I can't remember. I, I very rarely play plutocracies like Venice and Genoa. Like, when you do election by lottery, do you actually get to see the stats of all three, or no? You do. So all you get plus one to all stats, and you get to see the stats. Hmm. That might actually generate monarch points better than re-election. With the uh, three-year election cycle. Of course, we're not going to have three-year election cycle, because uh, we have six-year election cycle to start, so we'll go down to five. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe it would be better. We should try it. Something different. Cool. Um, I need to make some lunch. Let me make a sandwich. Yesterday, like, I keep trying to stream for more time, and I have. If you look at the sessions, like, I've, I've been slowly building up my stream time uh, while dealing with COVID. But um, I'm also in the habit of eating breakfast and then starting the stream, and then I just keep going until I, like, pass out <laughs> from energy loss. And I keep forgetting to make lunch. But I have the materials. I have the mats. I can craft a sandwich. I need a sandwich. A Sammy. I can't believe we've only played for five years. Um, here, let me play the five-year timeline for you while I make a sandwich. Sandwich. And then um, we got to decide if we want to... I I'm really leaning toward another show strength, personally, but I know how much you guys like early conquest for some weird reason. Okay, I'll be back. One sec.
Okay, I'm back. All right, Jimmy, I made us a sandwich. Today, we will be feasting on whole wheat bread. Would you like to see a picture? Show, show, show a sandwich. Whole wheat bread with three slices of, che of ham and one slice of cheese and a little bit of mayo. Enjoy. Okay. Um, anyone else want to join our league? It was 12 reasons away. We should try to get them to join because they actually do give us significant benefits now. In case you missed it, um, we get 2,000... We know we get 1,000 max manpower per member of the league. I was mistaken earlier. I thought it was 2,000. It's actually 1,000 per member, but you also count as a member. So the when you first form the league, you get two instead of one. What sort of cheese? Just uh, like a Velveeta, just American. Yeah, we get one land force limit per member. Uh, two naval force limit per member. Big deal. These guys are supposed to be protecting here. Let's get uh, a couple more light ships queued up. Okay. Did we decide? Are you guys good with going after uh, Livonia for Monarch Points? Because you should be. It's the right call. Sadly, I don't have any tomatoes. I have an orange. I could, like, cut up an orange and make sliced oranges. Hmm. We should probably put down these rebels before we, uh, do our war. 14% chance they fire. Stop drilling. And, um... I think we're willing to let the enemy come to us. In this war as well. So, let's actually dock our fleet up. And... Tell them to do this while going home during war. I think we declare for Humiliate. And, uh, take tech as soon as we are ready to go. I think we're good to go now. We win here, right? We win these. Don't want him to stop being a valid rival while we're doing that. We'll just kind of chill back here, um, while we wait for them to come siege down our stuff and also get our morale back up to full. We should be safe in Neva. We also have the Scorches already active. We do have the wrong uh, one of these have been enabled, but I don't want to spend military points just to get five morale armies. I don't think we need it. We'll win without it. The guilds are also not ideal. We want the traders, but um, we are probably going to build more buildings soon, so it's fine. Traders or guild both make money. Want to take Revol and release a vassal? We could, but that doesn't solve the issue of being behind on tech. Like, we're behind. <clears throat> it might not feel like it, because we've got these numbers that say we're ahead of time on tech, but in my head, I, I know we're behind on tech. We're going to be behind on tech. We're going to continue to be behind on tech because of where we are in the world, you know? So, I need to do things to... Cool. Oh, to stop us from being behind... Now, like, we gotta prepare for it, basically. We do want to improve with uh, Theodoro. Who else was maybe willing to join? We can support the independence of Sweden if we wanted to. We have no relationship slots, but we can get rid of our military access through Odiev. So if we wanted to, we could support Swedish independence. Or, as we talked about earlier, we could wait for an opportunity to attack him if he gets support from other people. He's got support from England right now. You think he ever declares war with just England's support? Against Denmark. I think he probably needs more than that to feel comfortable. Yep, like, like rationalize it. If you're behind on tech, do you conquer a whole bunch of clay and get overextended when you have no admin points? I mean, some people do, but I don't. 
Um, they do still have pretenders. Are they marching around sieging stuff, or are they just chilling? Uh, let's see, this is occupied April 30th. They're probably just still sitting there getting ready to move again. Looks like they, I remember they started in Viborg. They probably like marched all the way around or something, and maybe they're working their way to the capital. Not sure. You do, but you know you shouldn't. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here. Bum, 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 bum. Come on, particularists. It's time for you to rebel. There is a small stack here. We have 11 troops available. It's not a super great ratio. We'd prefer to take advantage of our cavalry flanking. They spawn over here. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. We can get our general here again. Nice. They're splitting the stack. We will arrive on the 29th then. We're off by a day. Boo. Hey, we'll just turn around. See if we can get them to come back again. We want to try to pick the armies off in smaller portions to really capitalize on our cav. Well, again, was there someone else that wanted to join the Trade League beyond Theodoro? Well, Aki is not too far off, but he is not a One Province Miner and should not be in the list, Paradox. Please fix it. Stop showing countries that can't ever be part of a trade league. It doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't be that hard to code. I mean, for fuck's sake, if you scroll far enough down, we're going to find Austria. Look, why the hell is Austria in the list of potential trade league members? Seriously. Stupid. You want to test this Streltsy thing, huh? Okay. Says we have a thousand manpower, we can click the button. Didn't take any manpower. Shocking. Cool. Weird. Call me surprised. He had rebels uh, a second ago too, I think. <laughs> we will need to knock out secondary participants. The zone of control from the Livonians does not block us. Does. It does block us from getting to Riga. That goes to here, this goes to here, and to here. We could probably focus on Teutonic Order first. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. He's only got one military point, and yet he is a 1401. Um, I feel blessed, honestly, with these crazy generals that we've been getting. Kind of ridiculous. Gunic Order forts are so annoying to siege because of their capital monument. The monument, I think, is dumb, personally. The monument only provides defensiveness to the province itself, not to the area. It provides autonomy change to the area. So the monument, like the capital, has good defensiveness. But the forts in the area don't, like... Wouldn't you rather that the forts held, instead of having defensiveness in your capital? Strange. He's got 11 gate troops of his own. Let's actually wait till we have the full army together. Bum, bum, bum. The Teutonic Order is hanging out over here. We don't have naval superiority, I assume, since I got rid of my heavies. The Livonians have six galleys. Um, and... Riga probably does have some as well. We could build galleys. Hmm. Lose money or stab? We lose money here. That is not a fight I want to take. Riga, 0141, bold fighter. So they don't want to move into our land, which is probably wise. We have a tech advantage. We have six shock general. I think we just go bully the Teutonic Order out of the war first. And I might need to double back, because as soon as we go threaten the Teutonic Order, they'll probably move into our forts. Turn on Trade Power Edict again while we're waiting. Um, okay, take these two. That fort doesn't have a zone or a coastal thing, neither does this one. If we take this, we can get on a... 
Can we get on to Marienburg? We have access? We don't yet. We can get access. We have relationships slot free. Teutonic Army is up there in Orcel, yeah. I saw it. Not sure why they're hanging out up there. We built a dock slash marketplace in Colmgri. Colmgri gets renamed to blah 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 blah. The capital of the province gets renamed. We gain six dev. And we get modifiers and stuff. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. Quick. Still a garbage province, but okay. We got claims on up there and over here. Okay. First government reform. Meritocratic rule. Goods produced, burger, influence, and loyalty, female generals. Point two, Republican tradition. So, if we're gonna go sortition this playthrough, while we're a republic at least, uh, is there any benefit to the random candidate bonus plus one with sortition? No, but you do get another option, so you still get presented with the the nephew, huh? It would be nice to have a little bit more boyar loyalty. We're not benefiting from the, uh, the secondary effect for them being above 60%. But, um... <clears throat> I don't know if that's worth doing a government reform just to get the equilibrium point. But this would, this would handle it. Point three Republican tradition. <laughs> And another 10% loyalty equilibrium on the nobles. Last achievement went well. We got it. We got it yesterday. Okay, that's what you usually do. Those two stack. Those two together, it does stack. So you're saying, are you saying that you actually do get the plus one random candidate bonus on top of the plus one from sortition? So one of the categories will be slightly higher. Can you tell which one got it or is it just, un, you know, just generally higher? Hmm. Yeah, fair enough. I would take this one if I were uh, not going sortition. So we can take it now. Sorry that I'm eating, but you know, I have to eat. I need to eat. Since we know where their army is, it's probably reasonable to do two sieges at once. Unless they, uh, drop off the map. As expected, because we're over here, they are going for our fort. It is in our interest to fight their army because we're really good at fighting. We're not very good at sieging yet. So now we have the, the, the choice. Do we double back or do we try to siege race? I just flipped off of defensiveness. We could hire the defensive advisor. Um, we have tech at, we have tech four, so it makes a lot of sense to take a fight. It's over nine thousand. But there's a decent chance that if I try to go over there, that they'll just you know hide in that gully again. Hmm. I think we start the siege with the Merc stack, and we send our regulars plus the 4 cav back home, and we try to do a fight. They have 25,000 total troops, but this 12 stack with a sortie on the capital with uh, 3,300 troops would probably be fine. Ideally, we would want to get black flagged so they can't see us coming. That's another option. In fact, let's do that. We'll ask for access through Poland. We're going to march into Wizna. And then in a month we can cancel military access through Poland, black flag ourselves, and then go pick them off when they can't see us. Very cheesy. But, what are you gonna do? Nice wall breach. We're amazing. Um, let's go back to improving with Theodoro. Crazy Fizz, thank you for your sub! Also Hefmeister, if I missed you an hour ago, I apologize. Wow, Twitch Prime, thank you. And also Unhappy Toaster, thank you for your 8th month. Yep, we're behind on tech, so we're going for monarch points here. Losing stab sucks, but whatever. Really sucks because we're a republic. But... 
Do we need positive stab for any reason right now? Yeah, we'll just buy back. This stack might actually be easier to beat. And that doesn't require sort C. Surprise! It's Daniel. Daniel. Boom! Die, bitch. Ooh, bitch. Get out the way. Get out of our country. Back wipe. Can't catch him. <laughs> Unless we are lucky and we calculate before he does. We don't. 16th, 18th. Not fast enough to catch him, huh? We have access through here. We do not. Okay, we're going to attempt to pick off this other army. Bum, 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 bum. Come on, buddy. You know you want to head to our capital again. It'd be fun. How are Muscovy's subjects doing? 48.7. Nice. 34, 39, 35, 30-ish. Muscovy is currently losing their war. War goal is... Conquest of Muscovy. What? The Conquest of Muscovy. Okay, so it's Travel Feud. It's based on battles. Not the province of Muscovy. Got it. Nope. We didn't take actual clay. We just took money. Lots of it. Money, war ups, and, um, and trade power. That's why we have 63% control of the node. We're currently getting 21 in Muscovy. We're getting dominance over here and here. Which is causing us to have a lot more goods produced, which is why we're making 13 gold a month in trade. It's going to be even better after we get trade power from the Teutonic Order and Riga. Because their trade power in the Baltic will, will get 20% of that projected back up into our capital node. Could take this fight. It's not horribly unreasonable, but... I think what we want to do is um, get Black Flagged again. And then they probably do... Oh, my ships. They do probably go back on our capital. Then we can pick that army off too. So, we will get access through... We got a fort. Pick off that army, take the capital down. Come back from Muscovy, get access here, over here. You guys find it super cheesy to use Black Flag exploits to uh, trick the AI. Does it matter? Are you here for cheese? Do you like cheese? I like cheese. Build a fort in Shenkursk. Yeah, I kind of, that's where I wanted to build one anyway. Interesting. Or do Diplodev and get money from the burgers. I like money. Hmm, I like money. I can't believe you like money too. Here. I'm still eating my sandwich, so enjoy some more idiocracy. How about this? You get okay, okay, okay. How about this? You get me to the time machine, and when I get back, I open a savings account in your name. That way, 500 years later, it'll be worth billions. Billions. Oh, I, I like money. Yeah. How many billion? It's 80, Frito. It's 80 billion dollars. That's a mighty big minus, isn't it? Yeah. I like money, though. That wasn't really part of the deal. Okay, I'll uh, throw in another couple billion, all right? I like money. Oh. I like money. <laughs> what is this? I like money. I like money. Apparently, that's my new thing. Combo of War and Crazy Fist. Thank you for your subs, guys. So, uh, I, li I like money. Well, Caxton. Yeah, we're, we're behind on points, but I like money. Don't need another fort yet, otherwise, maybe. Don't really want to do base tax in Corellia. Because it's not super cheap, and also we don't have any admin points because we just lost stab. It's gotta be the burgers because we want money. I like money. I like money. Don't you like money? We have to do another click too, unfortunately. Uh, probably military point is fine. I like it's money. Money. I like money. <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. Help. Chat, help. Hiding. You guys should join. Here. Join. This fleet together. Cool. 
Alright, uh, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna cancel access on the 9th of September. We're gonna go here, get black flagged. He's gonna be like, whoa, where'd this army come from? That's crazy. What was our Dimet doing before this? I forget. Am I spying on somebody? I don't know. Probably. We don't have very many diplomats, man. Unrepentant Wino, thank you for your 43rd month. Hello, sorry for not making streams. You know, I've been meaning to talk to you about this, Unrepentant Wino. We've noticed your absence, and I'm very disappointed. You know? Um, it just hasn't been the same without you, so... You need to stop. Stop not being here, alright? I reload this. That client keeps flickering. Ottomans getting killed? Ottomans are occupied. Are they getting killed? They are the aggressor against the Albanians, as expected. They are currently at 64% chance with a lot of dudes. There's their artillery. 12 siege status. They've been going for 400 days on Kruji. This is most likely just like lack of zone of control occupation stuff. They're not actually losing, in my opinion, but... We will sortie from this so that our cav don't, uh... Get murdered hard. Um, we want to arrive... So if you're going to sortie, this is how I internalize it at least. The... In order to force the, the cavalry to actually deploy on the flanks, um, you need to sortie two days before the combat. Otherwise, if you do it on the day of the combat, then the armies start to fight, but they don't deploy in the middle, and then the next day, it's, it's weird. I don't know. A little sortie on the 27th. Boo, doo, doo. Boo, boo, boo. And we've arrived, and the artillery, the cavalry are in proper flanking position, except kind of not really. What the hell? Paradox. How? How do you explain that? Why are they here? Weird. Very weird. Very, very, very weird. Oh well. My cavalry. They're so expensive to reinforce. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to do that. Um, I believe that they did fully fix the ability to... didn't they? I say that every time. The split button doesn't work anymore, reorganize doesn't work anymore. Um, you can tell them to auto autonomously siege or suppress rebels, but that doesn't do anything. I think they did fix it. Da 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 da! Yuri Vox! So, this is a change. Like, you gifted five subs. That that should trigger the, you're so nice. But it's playing the sound effect five times. What happened to my software? It's making it weird now. It's all weird now. And weird. You can't split the sack. The S key doesn't work. You can't split. I tried it. <clears throat> Got a wall breach on his capital. Cool. We do have 59 day siege ticks, so it's taking a little while. Nice. I mean, we could just assault. They're mercs. We have... how much worse we're here? See, and now it plays it. The software's messed up. I guess you just get all the sound effects. That's fine. I guess. Wow! Yuri, Yuri, Yuri Vox, thank you for gifting five subs and making all of the sound effects. 9k, 9K infantry assaulting here. Uh, tech advantage. Level 1 fort. With 60 day siege ticks, probably reasonable. Our goal for peace deal with this guy is war up straight power money, if possible. We're 180 reasons away from that. Let's see how the next tick goes. Food shortage. It's still gonna take a long time. I think we do assault and do some shift consolidation. Not the best general, but. Boom, boom. Was this a mistake? This feels like it was a mistake. Um, um. Yeah, now we don't have enough troops to do the next siege. Hmm. And it's not a very quickly reinforcing army. If we don't take trade power, we just go for money war ups. Ten reasons away. Seems okay, I guess. Hey, it's the Renaissance. It's a year late. 
Swami doesn't even have money to, or enough morale to move a month after the tick. Spooky. Alright, we need to get Riga out next, so I think we do want to try to knock down Latgalia. But we can get started on that secondary participant siege. Be good to swap the generals. Please don't tell me you're going to come fight us over here. Let's get uh, this guy here for now and get the siege leader over here. You have enough morale to move? Cool. And this is kind of what I was worried about, is they're going to reinforce with the whole army because they see how weak this army is. Shit. Well, there goes our mercs. This is fine. I like money. Whatever, we'll take a little bit less to get this guy out now. Our navy's not strong enough to go blockade him, right? Ten lights versus whatever they've got. Sure, fine. Fine, we'll let you off the hook, buddy. Send these guys here with uh, one less dude, and we'll have this army hang out here. Just kind of slowly work our way through that Galia. Once that's fallen, we can get on to Riga. And it looks like we do maybe have enough possible ships for naval superiority now. Their whole fleet's heading to the Gulf of Finland on the March 2nd. Okay, so no, they're coming back. You can call an ally into the war, Gotland. Hmm. I mean, he's got 12 ships. Eight galleys. We build favors with him very fast. Comparatively. Maybe he does one blockade or, you know, pushes us over the edge to actually get a claim, or to actually have naval superiority, so sure, why not? Join the war, please. Oh no, your ship's died. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> that didn't take long. I do not like how much influence the guilds have right now, so I think we spend a few points just to average it out a little bit. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, how is the war for Muscovy going? He's still at war with Kazan. Subjects disloyal yet? No, they've become quite loyal. Muscovy didn't take Miltech, but he's up to 20k troops. No manpower though. We are at 12 out of 22 troops now, with literally no manpower. Any mercs available? Free company won't be available again until March of 54. Three years. Whoopsie. All because I assaulted. Whoops. This is fine. Watch Gotland get 90% participation. That would affect us if we were not going for show strength, but in this case, the majority of the value from Riga is going to come from more reps and trade power, and the money we get from Riga is very small, so... And then with uh, Livonian Order, it's going to be show strength, which is... Ooh, that's a lot more dudes than I'd like. We might have to put the whole army here just to prevent them from trying to take a fight. I think we will. Make sure we have the good general there. 11k versus 15k with a tech advantage. If they take tech 4, they might try to fight me. They might try to fight me anyway, actually. Probably spy on him, I guess. And Theodoro was someone we wanted to have our join our league. They're willing to join, we just need to not be at war now. That will be useful once this war is done. Uh, and fought their navy. It's hard to convince them to merge with us. Like, uh, let's unmothball the transports so they might actually be able to fight. But even if you turn on the button right here to attach, like to allow attach, it doesn't work with navies. Like, they won't come follow you around. That's only one ship. Can we kill that? We'll kill it. Built with fire. They're blockading Gotland. I will kill one ship. Catch him. Gotland wants to fight. Gotland wants to fight? Let's fight. They have a two-star admiral. A 4-4. Four -four. We captured a ship. Nice. Join the fight. Go, Gotland. It's your birthday. We did it. We can blockade now. Nice disease outbreak, classic, standard, perfect. What I like to see. We have 400 monies. I don't know where it all came from, but we have it. We can build churches in Novgorod. Um. Any centers of trade to upgrade? Yes, we need to upgrade Neva. There's also a monument that we might want to upgrade later. Bum, bum, bum. I was right. Calling in Gotland did allow us to get naval superiority. Can you believe it? 
Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Bum 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 bum. How are we doing on this stuff? We need a 30 development capital soon. The institution did spawn, so... We have no prosperity. Deving nine times right now to get to 30 would be very reasonable. Very, very reasonable. I think we do that. Burgers are happy. We're never gonna have prosperity. Um, could wait for a level 3 center trade. We almost have, like, half, but... Yeah, I think it's time to just dev our... to our heart's content. We will expand infrastructure. We will... go... equal expense in all three categories to just get to 30 quickly. We'll go... click, click, click. And I'll wait one more month so we can get the military click. What happened to the HRE campaign? You mean, as Frankfurt? We got the achievement. Generally speaking, that's why we stopped doing them. It's because we, we, we did them. We got them. Two, two. Okay, three there, three here. We do not have enough points. Hmm. Well, fine. Two. We'll do one more dipple click and one more, two more admin clicks. Can we win the siege, please? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> technically this is another HRE campaign. That's a good point. They want us to develop Lucky. Make Poland like us. Have a fleet greater than 24. Okay, we can do that. Um, um, let's just queue up some light ships manually. Um, 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 um. Please take fort. This attrition is very painful. We're like, not gaining any manpower at all while doing this siege. It's brutal. I don't like it. I <clears throat> guess that means we can multiple the transports again. Probably end up selling them, actually. Because we don't need... We don't need to invade people or anything. Might want to bump stab again. I think we do. We'll swap here. Still need to get to 30 dev, though. Let's do click and double click. And I would like to expand infrastructure again. We just keep deving for the most part, get the renaissance. We have large city now. Yay, five splendor per month. Wow. Ooh -wee. Finally, the fort fell. I only have 11k troops. I need Riga to separate from the Livonians. Let's, uh... Chill here for a sec, let the garrison reinforce a little bit. And then we're gonna go try to separate piece Riga. <clears throat> we have a blockade, so the siege of Riga shouldn't take forever. It's defensive terrain for the enemy, but they didn't want to take the fight here, so pretty good chance they won't want to take the fight here either. We're gonna move to Mittal. Maybe the Livonians will go to Latgalia, and the Rigans won't. Then we can separate their two armies. We'll just park the army on Riga's capital after that. It'd be reasonable. Or they'll go after Novgorod now, because they can. Looks like they cancelled our military access for the, through Lithuania. That's why they're doing that. They see that this zone of control here stops us from following them. So, all the more reason for us to get started on this siege quickly. And we're just going to siege race now. To, uh... Whatever. Mm -hmm. exhaustion is getting high. We're at five. War exhaustion already. Wow. Time for increasing peasant freedom for spreading institution. Good call. I totally forgot that existed. Thank you. Yes. We talked about that at the start. We already have no manpower. We're already potentially in merc mode for a bit. And we do want this eventually. So yeah, I guess. Maybe. It is going to prevent us from ever getting to 60 equilibrium. But... We tried this one last time, so... It'll spawn a rebel revolt in 60 days. Where? In the capital? <laughs> if it's in the capital, that'd be great. <laughs> Let's try it. The boyars will rise up against us. Perfect. I'm for it. Wall breach. Nice. Random province. Well, that means there's a chance. A non-zero chance they could spawn in our capital. 
And boy, would that be great. We've got 29 day siege sticks right now. Um, don't need to reserve a slot anymore, so we could do the seventh one. This one was kind of theoretically reserved for strong duchies, though we don't currently have any subjects. Gain stab and 20 rebels will rise up in Neva. That is one adjacent. Gaining stab is cool. We gain more stab. Gain more stab. But a two stab, which means we can turn in our mission. I've done it. And Patriarch Authority. Cool. Alright, what's the next mission? Cathedral Cities. I have 10 Basilica. Basilica? 10 level 12, level 2 churches on Admin Tech 19. Yeah, okay, that's never going to happen because I'm not going to be Novgorod by the time we're on Admin Tech 19. Thank you, game. So... All provinces of the Perm area need to be owned by us. All provinces of the Laponia area need to be owned by us. There's a lot of words. Production efficiency versus trade power. We like trade power. Trade power good for a thing. These guys should move here. Wall breach, damn. Well, we're racing. We switch back to defensiveness. Indeed we can. We also switch to a port defense guy. They've got 45 day siege ticks already to our 29. We have an advantage in race, like, status, so we should win. Gain Patriarch Authority. We now have some to lose, so... I think we want to build it up more now. I love, yeah, I love the mission tree system. Of course I do. Nice. <laughs> oh shit. Right, they took control of the status. Uh oh. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Less laughter. Um. Hmm. I guess we need to hire some mercs, eh? Well, shut up. It was still funny, okay? They're just noble rebels. What do they want? 10% crown land? I don't want them to have 10% crown land. Yeah, the accepted demands aren't great. Losing 10% crown land is a ton. Like, that represents 550 gold, basically. Or a monarch point a month for the rest of the game. So, fine. We have to hire both merc stacks, I think, and fight them. It's gonna... Be expensive, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just gotta. That's what money's for. And this needs to fall quickly. We're gonna get black flagged in Riga, hopefully. And then walk home, merge the two armies, and take care of the rebels. Hey, we've got a naval thing solved. Cool. We don't want to fight their navy. Let's come back from these two things. Get all of our ships to... Well, these ones can go here. Riga. You, sir, are going to give us war ups, trade power. Yoink Dev does nothing. Force religion we don't want to do. Break their alliance. Uh, do we need to? Not really. Mostly just money. It's fine. Go away. Black flag. Thank you. Carefully make sure we don't walk through anything we have occupied, and get our army to be here. And we should be able to reinforce before that fort falls, hopefully. These guys can go to protect trade in Novgorod. These ships should also merge up. These transports can go here. Green mothball. Protect trade here. One more morale recovery tick. 7% chance we lose our capital, that would be bad. Just just in case you weren't aware, that would be bad. So preferably don't, don't, don't. Thank you. Alright, that's probably enough morale, but we have like 50, 30 day plus sieges, so let's get one more recovery tick. You guys will be there on the 9th, you guys will be there on the 7th. Um, um, we're gonna sync up on the 9th. Nope, pause, whoa. Apparently we're not gonna arrive on the 9th. Uh, whatever. Um, these guys can be late, I guess. Wait, they stop. Everyone stop. You're fucking it all up. 14th. Okay, we're arriving on the 14th.
Get him! Stupid nobles, thanks for the stab, idiots. Um, <clears throat> nice, we're exact, exactly at the force limit. How convenient. This merc stack can go to Revol. These guys can go here. These guys can go to... Hmm... We don't have access through Lithuania anymore. Um, um, I guess we hit the Narva. Bum, bum, bum. All right, so we still need more dev to get the institution. It is spreading slowly, 0.39 per month because just standard spread rate stuff. We could have more if we were at peace. We don't need to dev it all the way, but it will still take forever, right? Until 65, that's 12 years, way too long. We have more rebels coming. I guess our regulars will take care of the rebels. And the four stack can go here. No siege pips on those guys, but it's all right. Bum, bum. Two forts to go, and then we get our show strength. Get all of our monarch points. I'll make up for the fact that we had to dev push. Change our edict again in November. Let's, uh... I guess top off relations with our ally for now is fine. Spy on Muscovy is fine. Spying on the Livonian Order would be fine too. Do, do, do. You don't have to send the mercs in first anymore, Tawarzi. Um... A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, based on my feedback, when they actually listened, um, I basically bitched a lot about how, how stupid it was that mercs, who were basically hired for the sole purpose of fighting for you, would be little bitches and hide on the edges of the battle, and that they should always be forced to deploy in the middle whenever they can. So if your armies arrive on the same day, it treats it as it's just one big army, and mercs will deploy in the middle. Muscovy's recovering in that war, are they really? Holy crap. Attacker has won enough battles, so they have negative 21 war score. Yeah. Kazan won enough battles for 40 war score from battles, almost maxed out the ticking war score, but somehow Muscovy is occupying their capital. We're gonna see a white piece from Kazan soon. That's crazy. He took tech 4. Must be part of it. But the dude is like deeply, deeply in debt, right? We put him five loans in debt to start. We've got eight loans. And no tech other than mill. He'll never recover. Never. Never. Ooh. These guys say they're protecting trade in Novgorod, but they're hanging out over here. Not sure why. I guess they're afraid of that fleet. Bum, bum. There's no one blockading here. I guess we should do that then. Bum. 80 loans? No, just 8. Sorry. Did I misspeak? Misspoken? Advisor cost is great. We'll take it. <clears throat> yep, there's a white piece from Kazan. Must have pulled it back. I'm impressed. Really. Vasily III, Rurokovic, 033 Diplomat, somehow managed to bring peace. Lose stab or lose government reform progress. Hmm. Well, we don't need the stab. We're not giving up the opportunity for rigorous researchers. We are a republic, but we just sort of sit at 100 Republican tradition all the time because we've got such slow election cycles. So, I think everyone's just kept dying. I guess we do lose stab. You're just blind. I see. True. Me too. Bum, 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 bum. Albania did die. Wait, no, yes. Albania's dead. Serbia also lost the gold mine. Greedy Kosovo. Play. Another ship. Protect trade in Novgorod. Come on, Fort. You're taking forever. 
Unconditionally surrender, Livonians. Why we gotta fight? We should probably pre-build the fourth fort now that we have cash. Um, also, the guilds are in charge right now, which makes buildings cheaper. We'll get a fort started here. And, uh... I mean, churches are okay. But I think I'd rather save the cash for, like, level 2 centers of trade. Or even potentially the level 3 center of trade in the capital. I'm gonna switch back to dev costs in the capital and get ready to keep devving the institution. I don't want to wait 10 years. Um, bum, bum. We'll fall behind on Diplo points and on Mill points a little bit, potentially, but we're not spending any more Admin points on it because we're going to do a Administrative ID group. We will expand Infrastructure one more time, though. Assuming that we have room. Hopefully we do. Good. Click. 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 Click, click. Spend it up by, like, five years. Not bad. More Mercs. We now have access to the Grand Company, the Free Company, and the Independent Army. Not sure what just changed that made that now available, but cool, I guess. Novgorodian Mercs. Development to 150. Uh, we're not going to go that high, but that does remind me of that one patch where you could go that high. You remember? Back when you could pillage endlessly, and everyone had a Busted high capital. It was great. Oh, you're saying it's because we have 150 max, 150 total dev. That's the trigger? Interesting. Gain money or make ships cheaper. We already have all the ships we need, so... Take the money. Finally have the fort. I would like for our siege leader to be there. The rest of the troops can still suppress, because we do have rebels at 80 and 70%. He will force us to do another full siege, it looks like. We can go down here now. Bum, bum, bum. We could let the Merc regiments take the battle, since we're pretty low on manpower. Um, perhaps, I don't know. If there's any risk for the fort falling, probably take the fight, otherwise... Damn it! Just got a freaking food shortage. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Get ready to do the battle. We will contribute our cavalry to the fight. The cavalry in the Streltsy. And go join and attach this Merc stack. We'll take that fight. Also, the general should be there. Bum, 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 bum. This our navy should go back to protecting trade since we have no more blockades to do. We have 69% control of our Novgorod node. Nice. Nice. Very nice. We got a wall breach. Of course they did. Here, you attach to here. And you go here. Kill army. Make it die. Thank you. And you guys can stop attaching. Bum, bum, bum. You guys can go up to here. We have a decision available. Ask for contribution from the burgers again. Sure, why not? Why did you fort the province north of Olenets over Kexholm? The fort north of Olenets over Kexholm. Because I wanted to project zone of control fully. So by putting it here, I created a line. This fort projects to Kola, and it also projects to Olenets. Our capital fort projects to Ladoga, Tikvin, Holm. Right? So can you see the line? Like it's... It fully blocks it. If we built it in Kexholm, it would only project to Karelia. Polo would still be... I mean, it does technically still create the line, but it would have one less, prov one less province protected. Which would just make the AI go siege it. You know? AI loves to siege provinces that aren't protected by zone of control. So they'd be able to get to it and they would go siege it. Every time we fight, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, someone's gonna go take that province. Which isn't a big deal, but, you know, it's still better to prevent them from doing it. What is AT? Army tradition? We're at 45.5. 0.9 from fully maintained forts. We have a fourth fort started in preparation for fewer for next war. Regulars should ideally be drilling right now, and the mercs should be suppressing. 
Um, um, just waiting on one more siege. We could blockade that. Probably should blockade that. Have our 14 ships go merge up with our 5 ships, wherever they are. And see so if we can get naval superiority going. Hopefully he will reinforce and help out with that admiral that he had earlier. There he is. Come, come join. Okay, we'll do this. We'll just keep the whole fleet blockading to make this war over. Oh my god, we get to do a re-election. That's, in that's incredible. We've never done that before. 30 government reform progress away from getting sortition. But... Uh... This guy does have idea cost minus 5, which saves 20 points per idea times 7 ideas, up to 140 points if we keep him. Assuming he lives long enough. Hmm. Cost 15 Republican tradition, though. Bum, bum. Sorry, let me catch up on chat. What do you think about culture converting Sammy to prevent separatism? Um... I mean, I'm not really worried about that province. We're not going to make the subject. There's a little tiny bit of unrest here, but there actually isn't separatism. But what do you mean? Separatism causes is caused when you conquer the land. We didn't conquer it, we started with it. Bum, 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 bum. Too bad we don't have sortition yet. He's old, and I want the next guy to die, so I think we do re-elect. Hopefully we get Evan points. We got Dibble points, damn. Bum 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 Alright, there we go. Monarch points, please. Second show strength. Bum 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 ba bum bum. Ba da bum bum. Ba da bum 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 Do we need transports? Even if we fight Denmark, I don't feel like we would need transports. I'm still kind of leaning toward attacking Sweden if he declares independence versus trying to support his independence. He only has support from one country though. And our missions do want us to take this clay, but... If we're thinking honestly about like what our goal is... Let's just get stronger. Power through government reforms fast so we can become a monarchy. Um, and then I guess we either flip to Catholic. If we want to flip to Catholic, we have to actually conquer this clay and trigger rebels. There's no guarantee that Protestant will win the League War. Catholic would be better for us right now. It would help out with the second uh, institution, because we could get institutions spread via cardinals versus going Protestant. We're not too far off from another sale of titles click. We need how many clicks? Looks like two divided by point two, like ten, dev, ten more dev clicks would get us it. Do, 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 do. All right, we can wait for that last five, six months. Right now, I'm leaning toward taking care of becoming the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire first, and then we'll take care of getting the empire of China. So I'm aware we'll have to flip religion. Wait, wait, shit. You're right. Does that necessitate going for Emperor of China first? If we go Emperor of the HRE first, and then we try to flip to Eastern religion, we lose the Empire. Shit. Okay, I guess we're going East. <laughs> Get the free religion reform. You want to go Holy Roman Emperor first, and then power through enough reforms to allow any religion. I don't even know where that is. You would want to be the emperor and then force the truce peace, uh, the thing of Treaty of Westphalia. Herb Kaisertum. Abolish the elective monarchy. Ah. 
So if we turn that one in and then change religion, we don't lose the empire. Is that what you're saying? A lot of reforms, man. I guess we could go in either direction, but it does seem like it'd be easier to, in this case, maybe go for the Empire of China first. Can you still be the Emperor of China if you... You take Mandate by becoming Eastern Religion, use the Take Mandate CB. In order to get the Take Mandate CB, you have to be Eastern Religious Group. But then you take Mandate. Then once you are the Emperor of China, you should be allowed to flip to any religion and still be the Emperor of China, right? So I guess we have to go east fast. Which basically just involves murdering Muscovy, becoming Russia, and then using Russian missions to go east. And that would allow us to say Orthodox, though I don't think that being Catholic would block most of the missions. So what do we need to form Russia? Russia cannot exist. And Edmund Tech 10. Murder Muscovy. Get stronger. Got it. Tangri, I think, is considered pagan, and uh, you need to, you need, bleh, need to either be Tangri, either Eastern religion or pagan. Sorry, I wasn't specific earlier. Eastern religious group or pagan, both work. You get take mandate. Catholic Russia is stronger than Orthodox. Does it does it block missions? Because that's what someone else was worried about a second ago. Mike's out for her, my bebe. Sorry I missed you six, three, 31 minutes ago, and also Spark C, thank you for your sub. There are a couple that only work if you're orthodox. Okay, but are they important? Are they relevant? Like, the last time we played is Muscovy, and we, I played until the militarization mechanic started, whatever it's called. I was super unimpressed by it. Like, I don't care. It's not even as good, like, Russia's militarization's cool, but, like, the Muscovite one's, like, whatever. <laughs> you don't need it. It's like absolutism, right? Alright, because we are at peace, we could do harsh treatment. Not harsh treatment, we could force the rebels to spawn. Our truce with Muscovy is up in four years. We could attack Lithuania. Poland would defend. We have... A military tech advantage over Lithuania. They only have 17k troops. Poland has 21k troops. Tech 4. We have Russian winter. We have two forts with defensive terrain. Behind rivers. On this edge. Could we beat Lithuania and do a neighbor tax? I mean, we don't have any manpower at all, I'm aware. But we have 23,000 troops because we've got, like, multiple merc... Three more companies right now? Two? Three? Three. Two. Just the two. But we also have access to the uh, the bigger ones now, too. And we have money. We make 10 gold a month. That's like 40% net income ratio. It's good. Two. Um. I like money. Do you like money? This sale of titles represents level 3 center of trade in our capital. This is a big deal. We wouldn't be, uh, we'd temporarily be below 20% crown land. I don't want to do any more dev because, uh, we already have enough done. And we need to take tech and start doing our ideas, but I think we'll temporarily s slip below 20% in order to get the sale titles active. I don't like money. I like money. You like money? I'm gonna piss the boyers off though. Hmm. Not cool. Do, do, do. I guess rebels from the boyars is fine. Like, they're gonna be mad either way, right? I want money. I like money. <laughs> I can't not say it anymore, dang it. Another general? I mean, if you're gonna piss him off, just piss him off even more, right? Give me a general! Also, give me your clay. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! They rebelled! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the nobles are coming! What are we gonna do? How are we gonna... How are we gonna stop them? Cool. That's hilarious. Why aren't you guys... Okay, they are. Good. 
Uh, let's see, we have plenty of cav. Let's get another regular infantry. Join this army. So we have room for one troop. Uh, wait, no, I wanted to build the thing. Damn, I only got five of my ducats back. Fucking bastards, they also stole half my manpower. Bullshit. Damn it. I need 104 monies. Bam, Also, we were going to allow Theodoro into the trade league. Does he still want to? He does, but we need trade power here. And I cannot get trade power in the Crimea node because it is out of our trade range. <laughs> our trading range is only 210. Guess we can't get him in, huh? We could ally him though to keep him safe for the future. I have a relationship slot. We can always break it later. Old derps are useful, sure. Just charter a trade company to China. Sounds good. Civil War. Gain mercantilism plus five. We already theoretically have a plan to get to max mercantilism fairly early, so we don't necessarily need to worry about this. Gaining a base tax is fine. Prestige is fine. I mean, this does help us more temporarily, I guess. Sure. Are they spawning? In Vish... Vishn... this one. I support them! More pop-ups! Lose prestige or lose 30 monarch points. Um, I mean, I need my monarch points. I don't really need the prestige that bad, so whatever. Dude, dude, guilds are back in charge. Do another diet. And those boyars are mad. Build a church. I like building churches. Build a church to gain base tax. Get manpower to half. Haha, <laughs> that'll never happen. Oh, I like oh, I, I like money. Develop mezzin. Develop Mezzan. I have no Dipple points, but I, I, I like money. Uh, we're so far behind on Dipple points, but I need to do a couple dev clicks anyway, so I think we do this one, even though it's expensive. And it's kind of a shit trade good, but whatever. We have the money to do level 3 center trade. Boom! We did it! You proud of me? Look at that thing, it's beautiful. Also, Two months, we'll have the institution. Wow. We also need to upgrade the Neva Center of Trade. Also... We need to culture convert this thing if we want to get it active. Is that something we should spend points on now? 51 Dipple points to start the process. It'll take 70 months. A little over five years. Or is there a mission to... Auto convert it for us or something. It is a monument, so, and it's a, it's a pretty good one, right? One of the better ones. Provides flat institution growth, also increases the area-based institution spread rate, and gives reform progress. Doesn't the Russian decision change culture? You want to wait all the way till Admin Tech Ten to use the monument? Does it? I don't know. There's too many words in that list. The Make St. Petersburg decision. Ah, that's the mission that makes you move your capital from wherever it was, like Muscovy or Novgorod, to Neva, once you are already Russia, right? So that would require us to be on Abentech 10. Abentech 10 is an eternity away. And, uh, we're gonna run out of things to spend money on soon. I can see upgrading the center of trade or sorry, the the, the monument uh, earlier than Admin Tech 10. But we're behind on Dipple points, and we need to develop this random ass place, Mezzan. So 
gain inflation. Okay. Sure. Inflation is not that expensive to buy down because of remote burger bookkeeping. But we'll hold off on it for now. The Renaissance has appeared in Novgorod. Wow. We did it. Wow. It will cost 309 monies to embrace. I'm fine with that. Drill. Um, 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 um. Can I get some manpower from you, Gotland? Thank you. We're also allied to Scotland still. Give me money, Scotland. They don't have any money. They can't even give us eight ducats. Jerks. Maybe we should support the independence of Sweden. Just to shake up this region. It's only a five-year truce if we, like, make them independent and then break the alliance and attack them. No, Riga's not in the trade league. They are di they're diverting trade power because of, um, a war, but... What, you want to try to try to bring them in? Oh, they're only three reasons away. Holy crap. Good call. Sure. Do that. Um, um, um. Our trade league currently consists of Odiev and us and Gotland. That's it. But it's doing good work. It's given us six naval force limit, three land force limit, and 4,000 max man... 3,000 max manpower. Not bad. You also get to betray an ally that way. All right, all right, I'm pretty much sold. Um, let's stop being friends with um, Theodoro. <laughs> Actually, do we need the alliance to Gotland? Yeah, I guess we keep it. I don't want him to do stuff to me. I, I really don't want Ottomans to attack me. It'll be too long so we can actually use Theodoro. Sure, we'll support your independence, little guy. Declare independence, Sweden. Do it now. Do 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 do. Guess we should spy on uh, Denmark, maybe. I only have two diplomats, but I feel like there's nothing to do with them. I do dev clicks up here. Um, sixty nine. It's a perfect price. Into siege biff on our dude. Cool. Why are we doing it as Novgorod? Because it's uh, even sillier. It's kind of just dumb. Why not? It certainly is not the easiest way to do it. I understand a lot of people do it playing as a uh, white rat. They start off just going directly for the Empire of China and then they go west. But that's not how we're going to do it. Must fight claims. Yeah, we probably should do that. Yeah. We have 63 spy network. We have cores, so we can always reconquest. We have claims on Perm now, but... Do we get mission claims? We probably get claims from this, right? If we just take back our cores. Yeah, so why bother getting claims on Muscovy then? Better to just keep the spy network for siege ability. I haven't watched Room in years. No, we're playing on hard. We, we've done plenty of achievements and stuff in the past on very hard. We've done runs on very hard. It doesn't make the game any harder. It just makes it tedious. Like, you already get most of the downsides from hard when it comes to, like, getting alliances and getting people to do what you want them to do. Join wars, that kind of stuff. But the very hard difficulty modifier just makes it so that uh, every country has way more, like, galleys and heavies and stupid ships that makes naval combat annoying. And then, I don't know. Like, it... Usually when people ask me if we're playing on very hard, the subcontext of the conversation is if you're not playing on very hard, you're doing it wrong and you're like bad at the game or something, but that's not true. So I feel defensive when people ask. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I don't care about it personally, but I care about people thinking that I'm bad at the game or something. That's like stupid. I literally have like nearly 10,000 hours in the game and it's like, don't judge me for not playing on a game mode that makes the game tedious and not fun. Just makes it tedious and not fun, you know? Or less fun. Let's say. 
We need a little bit of money if we want to embrace the institution. We have a burger slot open. Loans from the burgers is fine. Let's do that. Let's embrace our institution. 300 gold is fine. We can take tech for no penalty. No innovativeness, unfortunately, but... It's okay. Gee, I wonder what ID group we should go for, guys. What do you think? Um, 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 um. What, do you, what, do, what do you think with our monarch point outlay and the way I've been spending points and stuff? Do you, do you have any ideas like uh, like what I might be thinking about going for? <laughs> Naval, maritime, religious. <laughs> Alright, let's think for a sec though. Let's actually turn our brains on and not just autopilot. Is there an argument for religious? Deus Vault while going east through all this trash to get to Ming could be useful. But doesn't doesn't becoming Muscovy uh sorry, becoming Russia just solve that problem anyway? Like Russia gets the ability to do Liberian frontiers and permanent claims. Russia itself, the the tag Russia has the whole like minus 15% coring cost modifier on all claims and or whatever like decision. It's like, I don't think we have to worry about expanding. So... I mean, I know I do it almost all the time now, but it's like, innovative espionage offensive would be pretty freaking good, so that we can, you know, murder all the people and... Okay, I turned my brain on for a second, but now I'm turning it back off again. The Livonian Order is no longer a valid rival. Dad. Doot, doot. Do, do, do. Riga, do you want to join our trade league now? He does not want to because we don't have any ships in his node. Uh, send the guy here for a month. And uh, let's revoke this embargo. We have a new valid rival, probably. It's going to be Lithuania. Sure, why not? I am kind of interested in attacking Lithuania just to murder them a little bit. They're still on tech 3. F Level 5 admin, wow. They're uh, doing that alright, sure, fine, good. Capital, you know the dev click here. I like money. Do you like money? I like money. Cool. You can turn off dev cost here. We have a level 1 center of trade here to upgrade. Can't upgrade because it needs to be at level 10, uh, 10 dev. We are motivated to do Four more dev clicks to get above 20% crown land. So I think this is reasonable to do these. And then we can upgrade center trade. And then we're one click away, which will push us above 20. Sounds good. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Invert it first. Um, I mean, I did say earlier that I think we're going to end up wanting the monument before Admin Tech 10, but. If it's going to auto-convert, I guess it's fine to just wait, you know? I already decided to go innovative ideas, which means that we're probably going to have plenty of monarch points and not have to worry about the institution, really. Innovative ideas just solves that problem. Let's keep the traders in charge. They're better for us, I think, in general right now. Riga, join Trade League. Thank you. Bring our diplomat back home now. Or, sorry, our merchants from the Baltic. Um, 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 um. Do we still get transfer trade power here if we don't have a merchant here? Riga has all of their trade power. We do not. Hmm. Maybe we should keep the merchant in that node then. Let's see. 16.65 trade with this guy. Does this give us more? No. But even though by having a merchant here, we are getting transfer trade power from him. And then we are propagating our trade power back back here. What we're missing is the extra 10% income modifier to our base tax, like our base trade collection. So, a little better to just do this. Seems fine and good. It's fine, Muscovy. Unrest, uh, sorry. Truce is up in 59. We got two years. April of 59. Less than two years. Alternatively, we could attack the, 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 the Livonians. 
The Livonians? The Lithuanians. I can say words. Bum, bum. We also have more land force summit now. Do, do, do. Those. Do, 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 do. Innovative has the electrolytes that your ideas crave. <laughs> no! Someone's competing for the innovativeness. My, my 14 innovativeness. More than that, actually. How much innovativeness do you get from innovative ideas if you just be the first? You get two, then you get two, plus four, and then everyone after that's three. Three times five is 15. There's 19 innovativeness for going innovative ideas. And yet, the EU4 subreddit, people like to shit on innovative ideas. What kind of crazy people... Whoops. Click the button. Uh, what kind of crazy people take the time to go shit on innovative ideas and... And why, why? Why do they do it? Why they gotta be like that, you know? Any other centers of trade we can upgrade? Um, um, um. Lose stab or lose 270 monies? You bastards. Stupid boyars. Did this event happen because they were below 30% loyalty? It's a lot of money, man. Uh, I don't want to lose stab because we're building up prosperity now. Not that we're going to maintain it likely against Muscovy, but whatever. The argument that you always hear is that you can take two different ID groups that they combine to be better than innovative. Yeah, well, sure. Wouldn't two? I, I mean, any two ID groups should be better than one ID group, right? Like, <laughs> it's dumb. Sorry. Innovative is the worst idea group in the game, except for all the others. <laughs> Just messing with me now, aren't ya? So, our next war with Muscovy will be to take Clay. We will take the returned cores. We will probably full annex Peskov. We're gonna abuse Peskov to... get mercantilism to 100%. Because... it's a game mechanic. And I know how to do it. And now that I know how to do it, I can't not do it. And those are just the rules. It feels like if you don't do it, you're playing suboptimally. So it gives the mercantilism. Do do do. What is the trick? It is to use the burger privilege called exclusive trade rights. It happened again. What? What? It literally happened again. Austria has a male ruler. It's not that it was a woman or that there was no heir. Unless, well, I guess it could be that there was no heir, right? Because it could have just spawned a random person, but it's still, it's still a Habsburg. If he died without an heir, it would randomly create a new person. Or put him into a personal union underneath somebody else. And he shouldn't be a Habsburg. I think he just screwed up again and didn't look. Look at his allies. He's allied to East Frisia, Mulhouse, Three Leagues, and Augsburg. I think he honestly just fucked up again and didn't secure the election. I mean, he did pass the first, uh, first reform. So he, he passed the reform, and then he just doesn't have allies with any of the electors, and then he just lost it. Again. So now we've got another weak emperor. Is that... That's actually good for us. Kind of. I guess. Although we got to do the whole... We decided that we can go either way first. We can do Emperor of China first, or Emperor of the HRE first. If we go HRE first, we've got to pass basically, like, all of the reforms. If we go Emperor of China first, then we can just flip back to Catholic or Protestant and do it then. So, the fact that it's a weak Emperor kind of makes me want to maybe go for the Holy Roman Empire play first instead, because we could secure it pretty quick. We have to get to Tier 6 still to become a monarchy, but... 
Which isn't going to be soon, but it's not going to be forever either. Weird. Once you are Emperor of China, you can make the Emperor of Atria tributary and win the election that way. Oh, I see. So yeah, tributary the current Emperor to force him to stop being the Emperor and trigger an election. Wait. I remember a long time ago while we were playing as Kazan, we tributaried the HRE, the Emperor, and that didn't stop him from being the Emperor. Didn't it? Or did it? I don't remember. We definitely tributaried the Emperor, but I don't remember if it forced an election. Prep for war. It's about time. We don't have a tech advantage. We won't have a tech advantage. Um, he's got 18k troops, though. And I think that we are now in a position where we can probably beat him. His subjects are loyal. He's integrating a second one. Every subject he integrates makes him weaker. He loses land force limit and loses their, their force limit and stuff. Half price, level 3 natural scientist. Don't mind if I do! How perfect. The game absolutely does want us to go for... Innovative ideas first, clearly. The levy. Lose more money. Okay, cool. Cool, fine. Sure. Just keep going into debt, it's fine. Do -do -do. Golden Era. We can't do Golden Era because we don't have Embrace Renaissance in every province and it'll take for freaking ever. Hmm. Not gonna have five centers of trade quickly. Guess we just start taking ideas. Try to get caught up to the point where we can actually, uh, do the thing. Lose autonomy in provinces. Sure, we'll click the button so the alert goes away. Do, do, do. Here's our truce. We need to remember to embargo before I forget, because I did forget earlier. And I will forget. I always forget when I'm already at war. He still has transfer trade active. He probably does cancel that soon. Hopefully those peasants will go get started on that siege for us so we can take control of it and be done with it quickly. Our dude is an embezzler. Kind of rude. He just canceled divert trade, so we're ready to attack. We have more overall troops than he does right now. And uh, we also have the Shenkursk fort, so our land is completely safe now. Um, I don't think there's anything that's not protected. Oh, Torzok is, and then Mezen, but Mezen's behind up, up here, so it's fine. Are there any available consecrated, consecrate metropolitans? Two more Deathflix, let's just do another consecrate metropolitan. Hmm. That's not worth spending points on right now, I think. We should wait. Why is must be so weak? because of what we did to them. We attacked them using a show superiority CB at the start of the campaign, and we put them into a position where they're super weak and bad. And uh, then Kazan attacked them and fought them for a long time. They somehow turned that war around, but it cost them. They do have a lot of manpower though. AI gonna AI. Okay, so. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> there is the yearly patriarch authority thing. I never considered that one. Probably should have turned that one on. Five, and five Patriarch Authority every ten years is not bad. We'll turn that on. Wanna take late? I am thinking about it right now. I'm just trying to decide if it's time to attack or if we should wait for... Wait for Miltek 5. There's no doubt in my mind that we're gonna be able to beat him. It's just a question of cost. We don't have strong allies, right? You gotta... You always gotta keep that in mind. We... At any point, Sweden could call us into an independence war against Denmark. And if we're in the middle of fighting Muscovy and it's say 80% of how hard it could be because we take the fight now while we're on equal tech 
And then Sweden also declares independence. What are the odds that Lithuania attacks us? Because he's got us rivaled, right? No. We... yes. Yeah. So like... Lithuania definitely has favors built up with Poland now. So then, the next thought that I have is, if we don't attack Muscovy right now, will the situation change in a way that's bad for us? Will Muscovy get suddenly stronger, or pick up an ally? And they're not going to pick up an ally, because they currently are relationship-capped, right? With all these subjects. So far as I know, they don't use strong duchies, so he has no relationship slots. That means no allies. He is integrating a guy, but that doesn't mean he's going to immediately secure an alliance with Lithuania or something. Or the Ottomans. And then the third thought I have is, will we get stronger substantially in the next amount of time, or will it stop me from the second, like, the next war? Like, am I missing out on time by not attacking right now? The sooner we attack, the sooner the truce starts, the sooner the war's over, the sooner we can attack again. Do we care about that amount of time? Probably not, because the main thing that stops us from forming Russia is not, can we kill Muscovy in time, it's admin tech 10. We have tons of time to conquer Muscovy. So, right? Makes sense? No strong allies. Did you scornfully insult Gotland? <laughs> no, he's our ally. Are you saying Gotland's a strong ally? I mean, Captain Lars Trolley is a 336 militarist, but <laughs> being fast is cool. You know, else is cool is playing efficiently and optimally. How long will it take us to take Miltek 5? We're looking at delaying the war by two and a half years. Two and a half years to get 0 .5, 0 0.15 infantry shock and 0.2 cavalry shock. Um, um, and I think in the meantime he'll continue to integrate his subjects, making himself weaker and weaker and weaker. A united Muscovy is significantly weaker than a Muscovy with five subjects. Just based on their own force limit and everything. So, there. Those are all my thoughts. What do you guys think now, based on that? <sighs> QU completely disregarding them all and saying, ATTACK! <laughs> Why are we supporting Sweden anyway? Well, we don't have to be. We can cancel it at any point, as long as the war hasn't started, but... Basically, just to shake up this area, we have a mission that wants us to do stuff uh, with these claims up north. And it's a little bit more difficult to do while Sweden is a subject. We could still probably just attack Denmark, but they have 60,000 troops. If we had an independence war, then five years after the independence war was resolved, we have a Sweden that we could attack. Don't use brain attack. Just attack! Attack! He can integrate so he can get allies. What allies? He's going to ally Odiev or Ryazan or Theodoro. No one else is in his religious group or culture group. No one cares about him. Like, he's not going to ally the Ottomans. Right this second. Chat rolls for persuasion, natural 20. Fine. All right, fine. If that's what you want, we'll just play silly like. We'll make the war goal Totma. Do, do. Fine, Jimmy. There you go. You happy? We will need to siege down Pascal so that we can actually take that land as part of the peace deal as well, because I do want to take that clay so that we can get to 100% mercantilism. Lose 25 Republican tradition to get an age 62, 514. Damn. 362, 514. 016. We're going to lose our free thinker modifier. Damn. One of them only has seven monarch points. That's pretty bad. Lottery candidate bonus. One random skill of each candidate has already been changed. All skills of the selected ruler changed by one. Wait, so is it saying that 016 is not what we'll actually have? Or is it going to be 124? Or is it saying that the 016 is already factoring in the plus one from sortition? It will be a 126. Oh, sick. So this would be a 625? This would be a 463? Damn, dude. 
Well, we already spent some government, uh, some Republican tradition, and I do care about government reform progress speed, so I think we just let the lottery decide. Please be good. We got the 362 guy, which actually, that tooltip lied, he did become a 463. So yeah, he gained another admin and another mill. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. He's also another... Seriously, every role we've had has been insanely high shock value. Nuts. This army does not need to have the whole stack here. In fact, we want to pull most of it off. We're going to allow for Muscovy to go hopefully occupy some of our garbage forts up north. While we focus on this guy. I did embargo him, right? I think I did. Do, 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 do. Once we get the Pskov Fort, we can definitely focus on battles with Muscovy. He does have 14k troops. He will militarize. Uh, let's turn on defensiveness up here. Enjoy the attrition from winter, buddy. Buddy. We could probably swap in one of our Merc stacks to avoid the attrition ourselves, but then we do miss out on quite a bit of, well, one point of siege ability. I think we'll do that. Let's do this and pull off these guys here. Bring the Mercs back around as well, just to prevent Muscovy from coming toward us at all with anything. Our king here. Epirus did a thing. Enjoy that attrition! Only 2.7% right now. But that's okay. It's October. It'll get worse. We have some real loans, unfortunately. Three of them, because of uh, some bad events. We've got 42 day siege chicks for us. There are two forts in this node over here. That is also in our node. Let's switch over to inland routes for 10% siege ability. Beat up sieges by three days per tick. Get a little bit more of an advantage. There's Baskov. Okay, um... Now we just need to get the war goal and uh, probably occupy his capital. Do it. Getting pop-ups about Munster for some reason. He's trying to integrate this subject to Blue Zeru, which means that that guy will cease to exist soon. We could stop him from integrating it. But again, I think he gets weaker if he just loses the subject. That'll happen fairly soon. We get a 7% roll? Wow. I don't even notice when that happens because I don't pay enough attention to it. Let's go up and around and get in position to maybe flank and pile the whole army into Shenkursk multiple directions, renting reinforcement. He has a 1-2-0 comp. Let's go kill that while he has insufficient ratio or whatever. Hopefully he can't reinforce in time. Uh, once again, lose money. No thanks. Um, he is reinforcing. He'll be there on the 17th. And we beat the three stack with insufficient support in that number of days, probably. Yes, I think we do. Go ahead and take the fight. If he piles in the entire army, it will be problematic, but... I think we probably end up stack wiping that army too. With the Shadow Kingdom just fired, Hess is telling us all about it because he is pretending to be the Emperor at the moment. We made the war goal Totma, so let's get that sieged. Bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. That is too much influence for one faction. Let's spend points to make that not a thing. That'll get returned by the zone of control. Move on to the next couple forts. He's already on medium enthusiasm. So, like I said, there's no doubt in my mind that we were going to be able to win the war. That was never in question. It's just the cost of the war, right? Like, we've lost um, 7,000 troops. 
Would we have lost 7,000 troops with Miltech 5? Dunno. Maybe? Maybe not? Focus on the forts that are in our zone of control, or in our trade nodes, so we have the extra in the route bonus. Yaroslav, 0% defensiveness. Reasonable to go for. Do do do. Do do. We, you used to have to occupy a fort in a subject's land in order to get the occupied and controlled forts in the area. But at some point in a recent patch, they made it so that that's not a thing anymore. You can demand land from an overlord's subject's land without occupied and besieged forts, right? Like, yeah, we get blocked with him, but we don't get blocked with the subject. I don't know why they changed that. But we don't have to deal with the perm fort is neat. We got that going for us, which is nice. Um, I think that waiting in this specific case isn't justified, though. Taking an early chunk of inland Russia as early as possible is always worth it. Hmm. I think that what we did to him at the start of the save was more impactful than taking an early chunk. Putting him five loans in debt and forcing him to have, you know, War reps to deal with is good too. Balo Zoro is about to cease to exist next month. He is training troops though, which is kind of annoying. This army is kind of exposed. They are trying to do stuff. Do we still have our Scorched Earth active? We do not. Turn on defensiveness in the state. Turn on defensiveness in the capital. We still have our half price land maintenance guy, so that's neat. Pick off a two stack here. Blizzer is gone. One less fort to siege. Wall breach on Yaroslav's great. We've got 20 day siege ticks without any other ideas or anything. Meanwhile, Mr. Muscovy has 42 and 42 day siege ticks. Wall breach here as well. Nice. Mil 4 is definitely more important than Mil 5, but any military tech advantage is impactful. So Mil 5 is going to take us from 0.5 infantry shock to 0.65. That means that in the shock phase, where we have a 6 shock general, we're going to be doing 0.65 divided by 0.5. 30% more damage in the shock phase. That 0.15 is a very small overall number, but it's extremely important when you realize that, like, most of your army is infantry, and they're now doing 30% more damage in the shock phase. And then cavalry shock point two, not as impactful, but you're still doing 20% 20% more damage in the shock phase. We also get more pips on our infantry. Are we getting them on tech six? Yes, we're also getting eastern militia, which we can see already how many pips they would have. We have two pips, and we'd be going to four pips. So, that's essentially giving you Better generals, in a way, is one way to look at it. So yeah, very impactful. Especially if you've got a six shock general that you're looking to capitalize on. Do -do -do. They are making slow progress on the fort there. Let me get out of here. Let's get out of here. Lack of protection. I don't want to lose points. I like my points. We want to finish the siege, and now we want to rally behind and just force that fort to stop falling. I'm gonna go like this over to here. Hopefully he's not gonna intercept us. He wants to fight us. We don't want to fight him. Fourth. Alright, we'll go around this way. If we have to. Take that. That 14 stack might come for the 7 stack. Gotta keep an eye on it. Do this down to here. That scared him. Once we get to Kolm, he can't easily reinforce. Double check that we don't have access to Lithuania, so we can't reinforce that way. He can't. Good. That means that this 7 stack is now going to almost definitely get stack wiped. Dead? Dead. 
Forzok does not get returned automatically, so let's path through it. And as expected, that 14 stack is threatening our 7 stack. But we got the fort. We really need a subject so we can transfer forts to them. Or visual indicators. 15,000 Palatskian Separatists. Man, that would that'd be fantastic if a little tiny Palatsk just Palatsked up next to us. How wonderful would that be? Muskvi has three subjects left. We will need his capital, yes? Maybe not, actually. I think we might already have enough war score, to be honest. Because I'm looking to just reconquest. We want to return this and this and this and this, which is what's needed for this. Double check. Purple, 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 purple. Cool, that gets us claims on stuff. We don't need to go nuts, but we will take Peskov, all of it, so that we can release Peskov and get our mercantilism to 100%. And we'll take war reps, and we'll take money. 61 reasons away. Bum, bum, bum. So whatever it takes to get him to agree to that deal is what I'm looking at right now. Once again, these things have too much influence, but can't do too much about it. We transfer another subject. Like what, perm? Why? You want to have two subjects to get strong duchies? Is that maybe the rationale? I think we get started threatening the capital now. We don't need inland routes active anymore. Let's go back to trade power. Um, ba -bum. Taking war scores also building up over time. Occupied and besieged provinces on his capital should be enough to maybe, maybe get him low enthusiasm. And then he might be willing to agree. That fort will hold for a long time. Well, only 26 day siege ticks actually. Okay, 69. War score. 69, nice. Look, Jimmy. Look, I did it. I did it. Are you proud of me? Are you proud of me? We did it. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Are you ready to agree, Mr. Muscovy? He says no. Negative 12. Weiner. A couple more occupations ought to do it then. There's one. 71 more score. Six reasons away. 12 reasons away. 15 reasons away. They got a wall breach. Okay. 73 war score, negative 10 reasons. Bum, 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 negative 12 reasons. He's heading to Rostov with the 7 stack on the 17th. Let's go here then. I don't want to have to siege his capital. Five reasons away. Maybe when that fort, or that, that occupation's done, and this occupation's done, we'll have it. 14% chance we lose this one. We have a age bonus. We have 215 days to get this innovativeness. I can't remember, did they actually fix this? I think they maybe did. They did. Nice. We did it. Okay, first age bonus for us. Adaptive combat train bonus affects the provinces that are called woods. There are a number of woods's especially against Lithuania, including their capital. Also, the Livonian Order. Also, potentially with Danzig. Very useful. Plus, we're not going for military idea group, and we don't have military ideas from our national ideas, so this is useful. We're doing fine economically, so improved war taxes loses value. Snake claims... I mean, you can always find an opportunity to expand with it, but I don't think we're really limited. In expansion that much. So I think we do probably favor adaptive combat train bonus. AE impact is useless to us because no one gives a shit. <laughs> and just strictly speaking, like, this is our religious group over here. They don't care. This is our culture group. They don't care. <laughs> no one cares. We can do whatever the hell we want. As long as we're murdering our own people. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's adaptive combat train bonus. Yep, Sweden's not independent yet, but uh, 
this. He's diet. Develop with base tax. No. Get to 27 troops. We are two away. We get morale of armies plus five for a while. Oh, money. Money? I like money. Do you like money? <laughs> I like money. <laughs> Do it. I oh, money. Nice. Got money. We have some of these bad loans. Fourteen percent chance. We can wait for this Yuri of siege, probably seven days. Don't good. Okay. We're at seventy-seven. Two ticks away from the next monthly tick that gives us war score. Two. We just lost a general. Was it the six shock guy? No. You'd you'd assume I I would know his name by now, but I don't. Fine. You can keep a tiny bit of cash. Just want to be done with this. We did it. Wow. Everyone can head back to Neva. Alright, we've done Reconquer Vologda. Boom. We now need to defeat Muscovy. Okay. These are all capable of becoming states right away. We can core land. We're going to make a subject over here. Alright. <clears throat> I'm starting to lose focus. It's been about five hours, but the most important thing that we're going to do that's going to make this campaign super, super silly easy is we're going to go to 100% mercantilism now because we can, and it's strong, and we should do it. It will make the burgers very mad, but that's okay. Would you like to see Crick? Um, we have to pay off our loans, our 1% loans. All of our loans. Alright, just in case they actually did fix it, let's make a backup save. Didn't need it, but you never know. Do do do. Backup. Bottom achievey, copy three. No. Oh. So, the stage is set. The green flag drops. Reference. So we have one, two, three centers of trade in the Novgorod node. This is what you need in order to have access to exclusive trade rights. When you turn exclusive trade rights on, you get free mercantilism. This seems fine, because there's checks and balances in place, right? You can't revoke exclusive trade rights unless the burger loyalty exceeds their influence. So it's not like you can abuse it or anything, right? Right? Emperor old trick, yeah, it's been around for a while. So... Well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on. Um, we're gonna get this interface open, which the check for whether or not you're able to do it happens when you open the privilege interface. So we were able to do it. We can turn it on. Ooh -wee. Then we're gonna release a subject, which makes it so that we only have two. Right? I only have two. So I'm not allowed to have this. So that means that when tomorrow happens, it'll go away. But wait, the check for whether or not I can turn it in or not says that I do have the right to turn it in. So I can turn it in and then it'll go away Then I can turn it in and then it'll go away. Doing it this way actually doesn't piss off the burgers, does it? It's great. So we just, you know, click, 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 click for like a month or two or whatever. Don't forget to count this time. No. In fact, here, I'm going to pause. We should be able to just go to the right page. Oh. Well, that was fast. We already have it. Done. Cool. So we now have 100 mercantilism, which does those things. Which is pretty good when you're a plutocracy. Because look at that trade power modifier of 439.5%. And that's without having on the local trade power edict. Look at that. Trade power modifier of 489.5%. Allow burgers economic freedom plus 69%. Nice. <laughs> Stupid. You can also do the trick by sending or tracking merchants. Um, I'm not sure if that would work in your home node. Because your home node doesn't require merchant. 
But yeah, if you were getting it yeah, like active in like the White Sea, and you need a merchant there for it to be valid, then yeah, that would work. But I think you're I think you're right. Anyway, um, so that's a thing. Um, and uh, also now we have a subject, so that's cool. Yay. Welcome to existence, Pskov. You're gonna like being part of our team better than the other team, that's for sure. The other team sucks. They don't know how to make good biscuits or something. Um, um, I'm just saying words now, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Our land force limit's now 29, let's uh, build more infantry. 29 means we almost have another Streltsy soon. Too many relationships. Bum bum. We could break the alliance to Gotland now. We could also release Satme now to get strong duchies active. Bum, 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 bum. I think it's reasonable. It's like weird land, you know? Plus they have cores up there. Yeah. Sat me. Welcome to existence, buddy. I want strong duchies, please. Done. Now I have relationship slots. Wow. We can also take military tech 5, which probably should have done before releasing Pskov. Then he would have it too. Whoops. My bad. We're using Eastern Knights. They have offensive shock. Good. Just do uh, seize land without a sale titles, maybe. I do not have anywhere near enough monarch points to get back to 20% crown land, so I think we have to skip one for now. Do do. Yep, and that gives us 34 limit, which means we can make another another Streltsy as well. Do do do. do. Hmm. Patriarch Authority or Abin Points. 10 Patriarch Authority swing for 50 Abin Points. That's kind of a big ask. You would never click a button here just to gain 50 Abin Points, right? That's essentially what the trade-off is. Yeah, I think we gotta take the Patriarch Authority. It's too much. Too much. Too much expensive. Doesn't sap me auto join the trade league because OPM? Uh, that's not quite how it works. You have the choice, there's a button here to create a trading city. If you create trading city, then they'll automatically join the trade league and they can't leave, and you also can't kick them from the league, and they're also a pain in the ass and really hard to deal with. And it, it, see our campaign as Riga. <laughs> I remember getting super mad about it. But um, if you just create an OPM, they're still just a regular vassal. They'll automatically transfer half of their trade power by default, but that doesn't stop you from diverting the full amount of trade power with divert trade through subject. 50 military points or 5 Republican Tradition. 5 Republican Tradition is worth more than 50 military points, so easy choice. Do, do, do. We can support Opraknina. But I don't wanna. Why would I wanna support Opraknina? Build a. No. Uh. Lots needs to be owned by a country of orthodox faith. Hmm. Gain loyalty with the patriarchs. Well, we could force religion on them. Get manpower to half. Not gonna happen. New development. I like money. You like money? <laughs> I like money. Money. Nice. Do 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 do. What is the best place to put trading cities? Hmm... How to answer this question? <laughs> Nowhere! They suck! Never use them, ever! They're the devil! <laughs> but in seriousness, um... You can only create one trading city per trade node. Um... So... That's... Pretty restrictive, right? <laughs> so the best place 
The benefit of a trading city is not necessarily that it increases your trade power in the node because you technically lose trade power when you create a trading city. Like, let's look at it from two extremes. Let's say that you're choosing to put a trade city in the best trade province in a node or the worst trade province in the node. Opposite extremes, right? So if you put it in the best province, then they're part of your trade league, which means that any trade power that that country has counts toward making everyone else in the node have higher goods produced. Sure, that part's good. But because they're in the trade league, you only get 50% of their diverted trade power instead of having 100% of the trade power of the province. So instead of having 157.7, if we gave them Novgorod, for example, we would only get half of that. So would you rather have control of the node or would you rather have, you know, someone else have it? So clearly in my head, that's not good. So what is the advantage? Why would you do it then? If it doesn't make sense in the best province, well, maybe it makes sense in the worst province. So if you give it to the, give them the worst province in the node, then you're barely giving away any of the node control. They're still providing increases to local goods produced from having the nearby merchant republics and whatever trading in the node. But now um, you're giving away very, very low value and you're still getting the principal effect of each trading city, which is the increase plus 1,000 max manpower per member. You're getting plus one land force limit per member. You're getting plus two naval force limit per member. Right? We have eight from four members. So based on those two situations, I would say that the best is to give it to the... give them the worst province in the node. You want as many of them that exist as possible, but you don't want them to take away your trade power. In the worst province, they give 50% crap trade power, and they also use their own merchants to pull trade towards the trade node. They'll do that either way, time's ticking. Whether they have the best province in the node or the worst province in the node, they're still going to assign their merchants the same exact way. I'm not understanding what your argument is. Why would them having a bad province affect where they place their merchants? Yes, but in the worst province is the best scenario and always use trade cities. Yeah, so the question was, where should you put them? Like, how do you choose which province? And I, I was trying to explain why you should put it in the worst province. I, I'm confused. Always using a trade city is... I still don't agree with that part because... Let's look at the... Uh, let's pretend like there's 11,000 countries out there that want to join our trade league right now. Right? They... there aren't. But let's pretend like Theodora wanted to join. Look at the... Well, we don't even have enough people in the league yet. Once you get to like five members in the league, you start getting a modifier for negative reasons to join based on size of league. I believe it scales by 10 reasons per member. And the problem I've always had with trading cities is that even the ones that you create by giving away your own clay count toward the, ter the size of league modifier. So essentially what you're doing is... You're... you're kicking out people who want to be in the league in order to create people who are forced to be in the league. If you did build it up and like put one in every single trade node, you could have 20, 30, 40 people eventually, but no one would ever want to be in the league voluntarily because of the size of league modifier. You like to use it against enemies and peace deals, take land from... Take some land, form a trading city that likes you to mess with the enemy. In my experience, I've just had too many times where I'll create a trading city, and even though they're not supposed to expand, they're supposed to function like a free city, basically, inside the HRE, um, and have no desire to take clay. They always end up getting called into a secondary participant war because they ally a bunch of stupid people, and then they end up getting given clay, and then all of a sudden, you basically gave away land that you paid aggressive expansion for, you paid monarch points for, if it was not part of the peace deal, to create this trading city, and then they just stop being part of your league, or their very existence causes one of your other members, who's generally more important to you, like, let's say I had Ragusa in my node, or Riga, sorry, let's say I had like Riga in my node, which we do, right? They're part of our trade league. 
How upset would you be if I create a trading city in this crap node up here, and let's say that that was the the straw that breaks the camel's back or whatever, and now Riga's like, fuck this, too many members in the league, and now I lose Riga. That's why I don't like them. I feel like, yes, you should create a trading league whenever you can, because the benefits are obvious. Land force limit, naval force limit, manpower. Um, not to mention that you also get 50%... Uh, sorry, 20% ship trade power modifier. Um, basically a uber relationship slot where you have many, many people who are protecting you defensively for just one relationship slot instead of one relationship slot per person. So it's kind of like a, a, you know, a combo ally, like having a Poland with a Lithuanian subject kind of thing. But just like with, um, you know, how manpower becomes irrelevant eventually in single-player E4. Eventually, the force limit that you get from the trading cities is not a big factor. So it's useful in the early game, but you can get all of the utility out of trading leagues as a mechanic just by inviting the people that want to be part of it anyway. If instead you create trading cities, now you're creating land that you can never get back. Like, do you guys remember how freaking annoying it was? when we were playing as Riga to, like, get the land required to, to do a, a mission turn-in or something. I'm trying to remember how we even did it. We, we had to do some super serious, crazy bullshit to force the idiot to give us the land back. I'm just saying the opportunity cost for what the trading city button does is not worth the benefits. The trading league itself is great. Don't get me wrong on that. I like trading leagues but the Trading City button sucks. Hopefully I made it clear. Um, and we did answer the question, right? Like, if you, if you do decide that you want to do it, you understand that it should probably be the worst province in each node. That way you get all the benefits without giving away your trade. But like... I'm fairly certain that the League Leader never gets the benefit from nearby Merchant Republics trading cities and trade leagues, trading, trading companies. I, I think that the only reason we're getting some modifier here is because of Lubeck's node. Like, they have a merchant here, and they're getting 20% trade power propagation into our node, and that's where our point two comes from. So even if, even if like, the League Leader could get goods produced modifier, which could theoretically justify giving the best province to a league city. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that we can't get it. Maybe use it in a mountain fort, and then they pay for it. Okay, not a bad, not a bad argument, but remember, the trade league is not your ally. If I create a trading city here, click this button, we're creating an independent one province miner that we get called to protect. If anyone attacks any of member of the League, the entire League gets called in to defend. But if I want to do anything offensively, they just sit around doing nothing. So... You know, like, it's not you're not creating a vassal or a march in defensive terrain that's going to actually give you tactical advantage when you're fighting the Ottomans. You're creating a province that's not going to participate. Unless you're being attacked by the Ottomans, in which case... Maybe you should have made a march, so that you actually have a subject that can join your offensive wars as well. I don't know, I... There's a reason why every time we come back to this topic of trading cities, I always end up starting off with like, Never again! NEVER AGAIN! I'll never make one! NEVER! <laughs> I hate them! They're so bad. Oh, if if they, if they could just guarantee that they would never stop being one, and then also guarantee, like, if they just made it so that the trading cities you create don't count toward the size of the League modifier for currently existing members, that would change everything. If I knew for sure creating another trading city is not going to kick out Riga and, you know, Gotland, then that would probably be all it would take for me to suddenly think that they're good, and I would consider making them. Like, in the circumstance we're in right now, it does make a fair bit of sense to consider making a trade city up in the White Sea node. It's downstream from us. It doesn't affect us at all. We're not collecting any trade here. We're ignoring any value that's in this node. So, 
losing a single province up in this area is kind of irrelevant. But another concern I have is I don't like missions. And I don't know what's going to happen when I steal Muscovy's land and then we're going to form Russia. And then there's some stupid fucking mission for Russia that says, well, well, you got to own all the provinces in the Russia region. And because you've got this little bitch up here that you've created that you can't kick out of your league, that you can't attack, that you can't do anything, you can't interact with in any fucking way. The opportunity cost is not worth it because I don't know if it's going to invalidate a mission at some point. It's just not worth the risk. <laughs> How did we get rid of it when we were playing as Riga? Do you guys remember? I really don't remember. Yeah, Galgamus. Doesn't surprise me. Oh, right. We killed the League by... We, uh... Right. We, we got rid of all of our prestige so the League was forced to collapse. Right. Right, right. But, that means to get rid of one bad province for your stupid mission, you have to collapse the entire League, including every other trade city you've made, every other person that joined peacefully. <laughs> it's so dumb. No. You can always kick out trade... You can always kick out members of your league, right? Like, Riga joined of their own accord. So I have a button to kick them from league. Right? But if you create a trading city, they cannot be kicked out. You, you're not allowed to. You can't attack them. They're part of your trading league. It's not even a question of, are you allowed to attack them with a stab loss? No. You cannot attack them. They're a member of your league. It's the same thing as trying to attack an ally, right? It'll say, oh yeah, sure, you can do this, but no, you may not declare war on a country in your trade league, exit the league first. You may not declare war upon someone you have an ally with. You are physically incapable of attacking your trading cities or kicking them out. The only way we could figure out how to do it, again, was to take our prestige below negative uh, 50 or zero or whatever the threshold was to force the league to collapse. The thing that usually happens to Genoa and Venice. You could also change your government. True. Yeah. That's pretty extreme, though. Selling them another province did not work. No. They don't have any desire for it. They've got the modifier just like with free cities. Where, like, you try to sell them a province or give them a province as part of a peace deal. They'll say, does not want the land. Or they'll say, I'm a free city. Or I'm a trading city, in this case. Very frustrating. Alright. What were we doing? We did the war with Muscovy. We got our mercantilism to 100. We're making money. We're paying for four forts, which is what we need. We've got level three, full, level three half price advisor, level two half price advisor, and level one advisor. Our army's a little bit pricey because we've got six cav. Got room for one more dude. We want to make another Streltsy. And we are. Cool. So yeah, we're just drilling and chilling now. Right? Maybe fighting some rebels. Paying off our loans. We already did. Cool. Building some buildings. Building some churchin churches. Churchinins. Get a free stab event from our level 3 guy. Cool. Sure. Guess we can give away money for prestige. I like prestige. I like money. I like money. You like money? There's a lot of edicts on. Whoops. Get these all off if we can. Never mind. Can't. So what's our next war? Lithuania? Maybe Sweden declares independence? I mean, they've got support. We got support from England and us. They have no truce. So, who knows what they're waiting for. Lithuania's got 26k troops on Tech 4 to our Tech 5. Poland's on Tech 5 with 25k. They're currently in the midst of their Danzig War. I'm sure that Poland will defend them. 32 reasons. We could rent troops to, get, uh, to the Teutons. We wanted to mess with Poland. 
We have a seven stack, which is not awful. We're renting out as kind of theory. Plus we have a good general, zero six. Uh, we do want to buy down inflation, but not till we're done with our idea group. Honor point generation could be better. Truce of the Livonian Order? Yes, I think so. Till 70. It was a show strength, so we had 15 year truce. Losing great power status. We're a great power? What? When did we become a great power? I missed the pop-up about becoming one. Yeah, apparently we're a great power. Neat. What CBs do we currently have? These. Trade conflict on Lithuania. Ooh, trade conflict on Lithuania. Blockade ports. We could do a one-way... We could do the one-way embargo thing on Lithuania. Force it to be a, a war about battles just to tax them. Again, the thing is, we're doing an administrative ID group, so we don't really want to take core, like take clay. We, we also don't want to take clay from Lithuania in particular, because we need Muscovy land for forming Russia. But taxing our neighbors has the effect of making us stronger while making them weaker. And I like money. I like money. You like money? Alright, never mind, we're at war. Queen has decided. It's time. The numbers look like this. Thoroughly in our favor. We do have 20 light ships, no admiral. We did keep the transports, so... Uh, look at that. Denmark was trying to help out with some rebels for him, but now we're gonna just betray him. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll march over here. The mercs can go... The mercs can just chill for now. I'm probably gonna send them south if we end up with access to, through the south. But I'm really liking the idea of a show, uh, a show superiority war against Lithuania Poland for money. Taxing both of them would help us out a lot, just like it did with Muscovy. Um, actually, in our best interest for that fort to fall, kind of weird that he's continuing the siege. Oh, never mind. Right, it'll go to Denmark. Sure. Well, let's just go there. We get there. Yeah, we'll go chill there for a bit. We do have adaptive combat train bonus, so we should pay attention to that if we can. This guy is locked going to Elfsburg, which is back the way we're coming, but can he reinforce is the question. Denmark on tech 5, Norway on tech 4. I don't need to be the one doing all the heavy lifting here, so... Let's let this guy sneak by. And see if we're able to... Okay, cool. So we can actually fight the smaller of the two stacks. Denmark will be gone. We kill that 10 stack. We have eight days to do it, though. Looks like we're going to fight the whole army. I guess we're doing all the heavy lifting. It's okay. We've got six shock. Get down to Elfsburg. Um, sorry, Norway. Wrong time, wrong place. Um, um, England is in the war too, man. Dude. Naval superiority for sure, right? Eventually. This war will take a while. We could get more participation by using our navy to help blockade, but... I don't have any galleys. And Denmark has a lot, I think. Eight? Eight's not that many. But with the Norwegian heavies, probably dangerous. Still no access this way. Alright, fine. Mercs can come over here. Separate piece, Denmark for money. <laughs> uh, we're barely allies with Sweden, and you want to betray them already? <laughs> already thinking of ways. We can support Opreknina again still. I mean, this alert needs to go away. It needs to go away so that it can pop up again when I can do this click. Bum, 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 bum. Hmm. Come on over here, Norway. Or England. I feel like this flag looks weird. I don't like it. Spend military points to assault to get this fort back quicker. Probably reasonable. Um, 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 um. 
Bum, bum, ba bum. Bum, bum, ba bum. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Still have a lot of edicts to turn off. Bum, bum, ba dum. The Trindalog Fort's necessary to probably get enough war score. You have a general not being assigned yet. Should put this Merc stack here just so we're getting extra participation. Just in case I haven't covered it in a long time, keep in mind that participation is earned via battles, blockades, and also it is earned um, every, basically like every day, you can generate a little tiny bit of participation score. For each siege you're participating in, where you have at least enough troops to do the siege by yourself. So if I just like contributed a single general, like a, a one stack with a good general, we don't get participation. But if I put seven stack on a level two fort, which requires six troops, we're gonna earn extra participation each day. Right now we are at 37.2 participation, and it's just gonna go up based on the number of sieges that are being done. So, because it's mercs, and I don't care about their manpower pool, might as well turn it into participation, which turns into prestige and money. Make sense? Kinda minor, but, you know. Prestige is good. Prestige makes us have more morale of armies. Um, money is good. Because, as you might be aware, I like money. I like money. I do. I'm a fan of money. Bum, bum, bum. Do we have access this way? Nope. Alright, this four stack should still stay here just in case. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. True! That's what I've heard as well. It's, uh, it's true. Bum, bum, bum. We're being blockaded. Rude. Go away. Stop that. No. Bad. Wrong. One heavy, eight galleys. Probably should have considered marking this land up here as vital interest before we joined. Because now I can't, even though we have claims and stuff on it. Dipple points are good. I like dipple points. Nice wall breach up there. Man, we are getting lucky with wall breaches today. I feel. We have negative manpower already. Let's pull a couple troops off. 50 admin points for Patriarch Authority. Hmm. Do, do, slow us down ID group. I think this is a no. I just don't value Patriarch Authority that much. We sell the institution. Oh, shit. Yes, but only to Ducal Prussia for some reason. Not enough Duple Rep. Also, people don't like us because we're Orthodox. Totally forgot that existed, you're right. Um, losing base tax to gain loyalty with the boyars does block them from being pissed for a while, and we are struggling for manpower, so I think we do actually let this happen. Gross. Gross, 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 gross. Will we transfer occupation to Sweden? Hmm. Well, the more participation we have, the more favors we gain with Sweden, but... The favors... Favors can be used to return the cores to sap me, so... That would be nice. Do we want Sweden to get stronger, is what I'm trying to decide. If we refuse to transfer the occupations, then Sweden will eventually accept peace with Denmark for independence, but they won't be able to take any clay from Norway or Denmark. Because we actually have done a pretty good job of blocking Sweden's occupations. We have all of these three. He will get Lund, but... Um, he doesn't strongly desire the land. I don't think he'd take it as far as the peace deal. We want him to be independent, but I don't think we want him to be strong. Um, um, did not know that. Kakashir, Kakashir make forts? 
Does anyone else hate playing as Russia? I find the AI running around in Siberia so annoying. Yep. That's pretty easy to solve, though. Um, yep, have forts. AI loves to occupy provinces that are unprotected by zone of control because they know they won't get returned by the automatic return thing. So if you create a wall so that they can't get through, they'll stop doing that. And then also you will have the benefit of having army tradition because you have fully maintained forts. Now before you say, but wait, forts are expensive. Yes, they are. True. We pay four gold a month. But we have good generals. We also have 11.9% bonus morale of armies because of it. We also have more manpower recovery speed. We also have siege ability. We also have blah, blah, blah. Like, forts are good. That army is going to get too small soon. We like forts. Forts are good. Build forts. Build for- ah! Run away. That fort is making no progress. Just, just everyone run away. Well, there goes our merc stack. Cool. Neat. I didn't like- I didn't like them anyway. That cost minus 10, institution embracement goes down, yearly prestige plus one. Um, that means we can take Diplotech. Still no golden era, sadly. Because we still lack embrace renaissance. Once we get the renaissance in all of this land, we might be... No, it's gonna spread. It'll be it'll be there. Just have to let it let it go. We'll get our golden arrow soon. It'll be fine. Do, 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 do. Please stay away from me. Scary guy. Here's where the Riga is up. Riga joined the Empire, so we can't attack him directly anymore. Bum bum bum. Plus he's part of our trade league. Probably get these mercs into here so we can pull regulars off. Let's go down to not this many troops. Since we are struggling for manpower. I think a big part of why we're struggling is because we did cho choose to do the um, peasant freedom line instead of the early serfdom line. The big swing in national manpower bonifier. 143 manpower per month would probably be a lot higher right now. We hadn't gone that route. What did he do on spreadsheets? Did I do spreadsheets? What was the spreadsheet question? What? Henrik. Oil. Did you spend five hours on 20 years? Uh, apparently, yeah. Is that surprising? I'm sorry. Do you want me to play faster? I could play faster, but I'd probably play a lot worse and teach people a lot less. I like money. I like money. Equip Streltsy. Bum, 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 bum. No benefit from the war exhaustion. I mean, do you think we'd be in the position we're in right now if we had played like fast and loose? I don't think we would. So. We're making seven gold a month while having rooted out root, like like we're making sixteen gold a month right now on seventeen on thirty seven as the underdog with Muscovy. Like I I don't I don't get it. I mean I do get it. I just think it's like a really easy thing for people to claim to be surprised by, but You want someone who plays on Speed 5, this isn't the channel for you. It's just... It's just facts. Sorry. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Would be nice to have more manpower. We need to get some more. Soon. A lot of dudes. Got 35,000 troops there. East Frisia, Lubeck, Fifth Martian. England did come over. Two siege pips here, cool. I'm not trying to blockade us anymore. I think eventually we do get naval superiority. We've forgotten about our icon. We forgot about Christ. Sad. 
Pum, pum, pum. Yeah, there's a little bit of manpower in there, but you can store up to 150. You're not capped at 100. So, I feel like it makes more sense to hold off on this until either we have some more exhaustion, which we won't, because we lose 0.15 a month right now, but, you know, it just feels weird clicking that button when you're not benefiting from half the click. We could consider turning on, like, manpower edicts, and then maybe doing the click. It'll be worth a little bit more that way. This seems reasonable, I guess. Bum, bum. Not gonna give us a lot more manpower, but we are struggling, so... There's the manpower edicts basically everywhere. Instead of like 1700, we now get 2000. Wow. Wow. Sure. You can click it. Whatever. Wait. Oh shit, we also get 10% infantry combat ability on Schultze. That's nice. I can read. <laughs> How long does it last? Ten years. Wow. How often we can can we click this? We only get 0.5 strolls each month because Eosif is three military skill, or because why? Eosif gives 0.5 in this one. 0.33. It looks like you can get up to 0.5 at six. So it must be 0.5 divided by 6, right? That much per per monarch point. Let's assume we have like an average of like a 3. That would be, yeah, 0.25 times... How often can we turn it in is what I'm trying to... Okay, so 100 divided by 0.5 a month. Every 200 months, which is once every 16 years. So that's pretty good uptime. More frequent than that if you have higher than... Uh, Higher than three average military skill. We do have 7,000 sailors. Weird. Weird. That's because there's 4,000 bonus maximum sailors from Trade League. Jeez. That's sort of dumb. We should get uh, access to Marines, maybe. Take advantage of that manpower pool. We can go around this way. This siege is not going very fast. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Is there not a government reform for that? There is. I don't remember what tier it's on. <laughs> tier 5, I think. And we're probably doing the Streltsy one then. But yeah, there is uh, this one. No. Amphibious Specialization. 10% Marines Force Limit. It's not going to give us much. It'd give us like three marine limit. <laughs> okay, grant land to the monasteries. Constructing churches and cathedrals increases clergy loyalty by 2%. Selling titles increases patriarch authority by 5%. Selling titles? This one? Even more patriarch authority from clicking the button that I want to click anyway. It also gives yearly patri patriarch authority 0.2, which is probably 0.25, but rounding down. Curtail cler clerical privileges, admin tech cost, and seizing land from the clergy does not trigger rebels. Increases local tax modifier from churches by 33%. Makes administrative advisors cheaper. Or another diplomat. Hard to pass up another diplomat when you only have two. Are we close to being a kingdom? We can't be a kingdom because we're a Vecchi Republic fixed at duchy. Which further... Increases my interest in another diplomat, but... But... Patriarch Authority... You can sell titles once every five years, assuming you have enough development clicks to maintain Crownland. That means you could gain... Effectively... It's like effectively an extra 1% Patriarch Authority a year, right? Which is nuts when compared to... The effect of the... this thing... It's twice as good as clerical ministers. Assuming you have the crownland to support the clicks. Hmm. 
and we're struggling for manpower and patriarch authority gives manpower hmm and that's not even factoring in the extra 0.2 or 0.25 maybe we don't need the diplomat that bad something else beside orthodox true but while we're orthodox it, I mean, I don't know when we're going to stop being orthodox. I'm not, I'm still not even sure if we're going east or west yet. We might end up going for the Empire of China first, which means we'll be orthodox for a long time. This is about solving the current issues, not really about solving the long-term issues. If we take that, it's not going to stop us from flipping religion. Probably, yeah this one also yeah we lost our icon that gives dev discount and uh construction costs we could swap to icon of michael for manpower recovery speed plus 10 percent which would give us a little bit more not a lot considering this is our issue i think we will yeah the discipline's okay it's decent. It's like nothing to get super excited about, you know? It's basically the same thing as hiring a morale of armies or a 5% discipline advisor, but... It's... not nothing. East Frisia is out of the war. Nice. Like they are trying to siege a fort here. Sweden just abandoned ba the siege here. Ah, oh, crap. I'm just now noticing that... Okay, so yesterday I reloaded an older version of E4, and it reset all my, like, alerts and stuff. And I can immediately tell that is wrong. Like, <laughs> it's doing cultural words. I can't pronounce this shit. I need to turn it off. Immediately. However, it will probably not... I don't think you can turn it off in an existing save file. You have to turn it off before you start. I think. With Iron Man. Gross. You guys can go around. Um, so, do we want to transfer forts to the guy? Holy crap. Dude, our generals have been insane. Every single general we've rolled this campaign has been crazy. Crazy. We just got a 4432. Now, there's nothing special about our ideas or anything that's given us extra pips. It's just. Just a blessed run. We can do a development, couple development clicks to get money. I like, I like money. We can also do manpower dev to get manpower, which would be also good. Because I don't have any manpower. 150 military points. We're behind on mil tech. I'd rather get tech than have manpower. We can always hire mercs. I like money. Money. We can do those clicks. Damn it. Oh, they went the wrong way. I wasn't smart of them. Starting to think that I like money. Good, you're learning. <laughs> Alright, fort defense or siege ability? Obviously siege ability, because sieges win wars. We are losing innovativeness, because we do not have enough technology. But we'll be taking Miltech as soon as possible. We gotta decide, are we transferring forts to Sweden or not? I'm leaning toward not because I don't want him to get any more land. But, actually, I'm thinking that I might need to, uh, to wrap up for the day. I'm losing attention. And also, that guy who's like, oh my god, 20 years and five, five hours made me feel bad. <laughs> so now I want to leave. Steve. <laughs> Ooh. 
Aruma has sensitive emotions. Aruma is not a robot. Weird. Weird. <laughs> also, I still have Corona, or am still recovering for, from Corona at least, so that's part of it too. That's probably the bigger part. But he's st this is still a Stevie, Steve type statement. You gotta admit. Mm. But tomorrow, uh, things will pick up quickly because, you know, the next war is for this. We have claims on all of Muscovy now. Um, we will be no longer doing an administrative ID group. We'll be able to core land. We'll have our group done. Our advisors will be cheap. We'll be rich. Er, we're already rich, but we'll be richer. We're gonna make progress. It'll be fine. Cool, cool, cool. I hope you guys had fun today. I'm gonna call it, I think. Also, did I notice your sub, Captain Squall? Sorry if I didn't. Give your sub, yeehaw. Weird achievement, but we're going for it. Have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I'll see you soon. Good night.